Meeting back to order. Uh, motion, can I have a motion to reconvene the public session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, all opposed? Um, we're, we're back to public session. Uh, Linda, can we do, uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Or, Announcement of notice? Oh, I have to read this again? I thought I read this already. Well, you weren't supposed to. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Well, I didn't do it so well first time. Uh, in, in accordance with the provision of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, the Highland Park Board of Education has given adequate notice of this meeting by having published the date, time, and place of this meeting in the Home News Tribune. It has posted notice of this meeting at, at the middle school, 3, 330 Wayne Street, Highland Park, New Jersey. Uh, can we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Oh, just have to oh, it's fine, it's fine. It's, I'll be the first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's comedy portion of our meeting. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Much like the rest of it. Hi. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Linda, can we have a roll call, please? <clears throat> Ms. Aversa? Here. Ms. Berkowitz? Ms. Bull? Here. Ms. Simaristi? Here. Ms. Gowan? Here. Ms. McFadden Dina Cola? Here. Mr. Rob Roselitz? Here. Ms. Sherber? Here. Mr. Sherman? Here. Linda, uh, are there any communications for the board? Uh, yes. Uh, we received uh, several communications uh, since the last meeting. Um, we, the board received a letter from a student, which I know you all received. Mm -hmm. um, then the um, mayor wanted the board to know that the League of Municipalities announced the Lewis Bay Second Future Municipal Leaders Scholarship Competition for high school juniors and seniors planning to continue their education after high school. Um, there is a uh, suggested time frame. I am assuming that the mayor is uh, mayor's office is is, is spearheading this. Um, February first was announcing the contest by the mayor's office. Uh, the mayor's office was supposed to or should be creating a local judging committee before March first, and the deadline for submission submission of entries to the hometown mayor is March tenth. Um, so that's exciting. Um, Dara Botvinik sent an email to all the middle school staff regarding the success of Diversity Day 2015, which was held on Thursday, January 22nd. Uh, she mentioned by name in her letter all the staff that helped pull the day together, thanked the teachers for giving awesome workshops such as Rising India, Pinwheels for Peace, and Desegregating the Military. Thank them for supervising, participating, moving furniture, opening the walls, setting up computers, etc. She also thanked the technology department and Tempco for various setups and for helping to make things run smoothly. And she thanked the Teen Center for giving a number of workshops. Um, okay, so it was a very successful day. Um, the uh, we received a correspondence that uh, from the Make a Wish Foundation. Mm -hmm. Uh, from New Jersey uh, to uh, Miss Angie Harper from the DECA Club, thanking uh, her for their support. Um, the DECA Club's Make-A-Wish Halloween Walk uh, fundraiser uh, raised a total of $3,816 and helped to fund uh, a student named Ami's wish to go to Walt Disney World in Florida. Um, so congratulations uh, and thanks to the DECA um, organization. Yep. I think we, uh, that was sent to the full board. Thanks to, I think Jerry sent that around to all of us. Um, so. Yes, yeah. that was it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. And I, who, who's doing the uh, curriculum? <laughs> curriculum is Michelle today. Michelle, I have a read-in for you, may I? Yeah, we also, we have another read-in as well. Uh, Linda, please. There's going to be another meeting for curriculum. Okay. 
I guess he can give it to Michelle. No, she already has. She has it. Oh, but one, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Linda. Um, can I have an approval, uh, a motion to approve the minutes of December 8th executive session revised uh, and January 20th uh, regular and executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Are there any conversations? <coughs> Linda, roll call, please. Ms. Aversa? Yes. Ms. Burke? Oh, sorry. Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simaristi? Yes, on December 8th, abstain on January 20th. Ms. Gowan? Abstain on December 8th and yes on the 20th. Ms. McFadden, D. Nicola? Abstain on December 8th and yes on the 20th. Mr. Roslowitz? Abstain and yes. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Uh, yes on the 8th, abstain on the 20th. I'm happy to declare yep. that we have <laughs> passed the minutes for December 8th. Yep, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Soto, can we have the superintendent's report, please? But wait, was, was Jerry at that meeting? Jerry was not at you that meeting. You don't have to be at the meetings to approve minutes. It's Oh, really? Yeah. Then why do we always abstain when it's, we're not at meetings? It's How just, can you approve minutes of meetings that you're not at? The, the, your, what you're approving, sorry, go on, you explain. You explain I'm sorry, it. I mean, that's no, no, what no, we've it's always not, done. No, it's not a stupid, yeah. It's just, I just abstained because I wasn't at the January 20th yeah, meeting. Yeah. How can yeah. I? So what you're approving is that the minutes were approved. You were are approving that the minutes are an accurate representation of what happened at that meeting. But you how can you if you weren't if there? Not right. Then um, are you changing your verse, your mm -hmm. vote, Miss Aversa? Well, yeah, because I forgot. It was back to December 8th. December 8th. I, I, was, I don't know if I was here. You don't know. If, no. Here. Can you look at the minutes and see if you were on the No, air? I can't get on the Oh, one. okay. I don't think I was here for that one. No. You don't, but you don't have to be here to approve the minutes. It's just, a, my understanding is that what you're approving is that you're approving that they were properly compiled by Linda's office, not even the content of the minutes, is my understanding. Then we should all always approve we, all yes. the minutes. You are more than, welcome, you are more <laughs> yeah, than welcome to. People do. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was accuracy. Okay. No. I mean, I don't know. I, Linda? I don't have a problem with the minutes of well, December I, mean, I, I just it, wasn't there. Wasn't, if they are reasonable, then you can approve them. There's nothing it to say you. Matter, but like if I wasn't here, there's then. nothing to say you're not allowed to approve. No, them. I mean, but that's I why it hasn't been, been approved all to these times because only right. people that were at the meeting were. It's, that's it's just practice. the way we've always done it. But you, but I voted for minutes that I haven't been for just in the need, on the need before. Kind of just was goes Jonathan consulted on that? Huh? Was Jonathan consulted on that? For minutes that you're not here to witness. You can vote. There's no. There's no regular. I mean, this is. There's no. no you can vote as a board member. It. It's not about the attorney. It's what you want to do individually. Anyway, it's your. It's your own. Pers it's your own perspective of. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, sorry. You're not prohibited. Yeah. From proving minutes because you weren't at a meeting. If the minutes are reasonable to you, you may approve them. What happens if we can't approve a set of minutes um, because we don't have a, um, a well, majority? Well, it's a violation of CUSAC if they really wanted to scrutinize, but usually they don't go to that <laughs> level. Right, because so it actually seems to make sense to me that you not vote on right, minutes. Right, because usually uh, you know. if we're not. Right, I mean, I, I so actually I think. No, I mean, it's what the practice is, but it's also what my point is that it's not been out of the norm, or sorry, it is out of the norm. It's not unheard of to vote for minutes that you were not there for. I think in general we try yeah. to. We, I agree. Yeah. So I'm, if you weren't, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it. Here, so You're, I'm looking at it. You weren't. Back. You weren't here, and Dan wasn't here, and that's been the problem. Okay. We haven't had a combination of five of us here because. Most well, then we might as well not put it on unless right. we're sure we're going to have yeah. the same five. People. Unless you feel comfortable supporting them. Are you changing your vote, yes. Mr. First? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will. We will be presenting the minutes. December 8th minutes at the next board meeting. We will have a conversation with the attorney as well to get legal guidance. I know there's no there's no issue here. You, but let's we'll wait until we talk to the attorney. Non attendance. Yeah. So. Or new board. You know, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know. I know. If you look at how legislative bodies do it, it's fine. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Soto, can we have the superintendent report, please? Absolutely. Let's begin with our student update, if we may. Okay. Um, okay. So. We haven't had meetings in a while, so we have just a little bit of catching up to do, but right. I won't go back too far. Um, the farthest back I'll go is midterms, and those went well. Um, 
The regionals choir had their performance in Monroe. This is something that um, choir students audition for and can get into, and so we just wanted to congratulate the students that took part in that. And those students are Jamie Achenow, Nick Dela Cruz, Michelle Fan, Yulin Nee, Olivia Wolanski, and Talia Sklafani. And then with sports, uh, the winter sports are actually winding down now. Um, I think this is the last week for winter sports. Uh, the girls basketball team, uh, this happened January 31st, but it's still an exciting statistic. They won in the last 30 seconds of their game with two foul shots by Rachel Beyer. And the boys' senior night is tomorrow at 6 p.m., so we should all go and support. And the girls' senior night is Thursday. Wrestling, a little while ago, won their meet against Rutgers Prep. And this is exciting because they often don't win um, as a team, even if individuals win matches because they're so small this year. So that was exciting. Um, additionally, Sam Guerrero is district champion, and Jose Ruiz placed fourth. So congrats to them. Um, the DECA members received awards uh, during a meeting on 19th for the regionals competition. And the state competition is going on now, which is why Vivek is in here today. Master Corral has resumed after Mr. Jung's paternity leave. He's back and everything's going well with that. Uh, we're really proud of our HP mock trial team. That's something that started this year. They placed top four in Middlesex, and this is a great achievement because we're such a small school. Uh, we won two rounds and we beat Metuchen, so that's exciting. <laughs> so we'd just like to um, congratulate the participants on that. Amar Venegupal, Lucas Irvine, Becca Chant, Michelle Wang, Chris Zhao, Olivia Bridges, Tomas Sanchez, David Isaacson, and Micah Gardenberg for their hard work and achievements in this new program. We had a talent show and that went well. Uh, now that Ms. Maharana has left, we have a new robotics advisor, Mr. Moore. So that's going well. We also hosted Mr. Highland Park, which hopefully some of you attended. The show was funny, exciting, filled with some talent and um, <laughs> less inappropriate than in previous years, so that's a success. We also raised um, a lot of funds for the senior class, which is the main goal. Mr. Highland Park is Jeffrey Muniz of the senior class. So um, in progress sort of things are, um, as we mentioned in the previous meeting, the Student Congress held a funding meeting uh, to give out some funds to some clubs on Wednesday, February 4th. and. The funds were awarded to The Fling, uh, who wants to send some writers to a journalism workshop, as well as invest in some folders to preserve the old issues. We have Fling issues dating back to like the 1920s, and we want to preserve them. So wow. uh, they're using some money to Jerry and I would like that. create special yeah. folders. Um, and then funds were also awarded to Rumen slash RMC, um, who want to raise money to make the trip more affordable for students. We also held a video game tournament to raise money for Student Congress so this type of um, awarding of funds can be possible. Uh, the tournament was a Super Smash Brothers tournament and Patrick Liu won. The senior class is also holding a fundraiser that's happening right now. We're selling chocolate. So if you, Do you have any like on you? chocolate. Yeah. I did not bring it with me. <laughs> you missed, a, you missed a sale. I think we did. Um, but it's not due till February 25th, so. And then we just have two questions. Mm -hmm. The first being, um, at the last meeting, uh, you, I think it was um, Mr. Sherman said that uh, you might be interested in us doing another survey about the elective classes. Um, and we were just wondering if the elective classes you had presented, or like had, that was um, appeared in the last meeting, you know, those, if those had like moved forward or if there was anything with that or if um, there was something specific you wanted us to ask, so that's one. And then uh, Haley Conrad and the students of the Environmental Club uh, have this idea for a, a water bottle filling station. And I know it sounds weird initially because you just think, well, we have water fountains, but um, We've looked this at them is before. to... Uh, oh, what? We, no, we, you've explained oh, it. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, oh, though. Okay. We've looked um, at them. They're nice. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just a really easy place to fill up water bottles and to encourage using um, reusable water bottles. Yep. So. so in response to that, uh, Linda and I looked. Uh, there are water fountains that are made uh, that have the water fountain on the bottom and then at the top of it have a uh, spout. Yeah. When we replace our water fountains, that would probably be something uh, that we go towards. Do you, do you know like when they're replaced or is that like? When they break. Yeah, okay. pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, beyond that. Don't invite people. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, please. Please. 
um, beyond that, um, it just it, it's a cost factor. It's a yeah, yeah. It's a cost factor, but it's something I we I, Linda and I actually saw the mo a model that we liked. It just when they break, that's when we do them in the in, for the most part. Um, otherwise, I tell you to use the sink. Yeah. But I'm all for uh, using. Uh, reusable bottles. Okay, and anything about the survey? Survey is up to you guys. It was just a suggestion from my end. Um, as you can see, we're going into budget season. Um, we approved new electives last year that we haven't had in a long time. Uh, we're proving uh, we're going to be talking about a new course today. Um, it's just if, you know, as you guys may know, what you want to learn sometimes more than we do. If you have anything along those lines, it's something that we have a conversation about, the curriculum committee would have a conversation about, um, Israel would have a conversation about, um, in terms of, you know, budgeting. Because when we do approve a new course, it, 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 there are many things that go into it, a teacher, books, um, professional development. So it's, it is a cost factor. But we also, at least I believe, uh, that our book, our high school in particular, might be a little bit out of date of what the electives that we offer for the times that we're in, um, and could use some updating. And maybe some student initiatives might be a go a long way. All right, thank you. Can I attack on two, Absolutely. Uh, two things just about Project Graduation? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of fundraisers for oh, Project yeah. Graduation, actually, um, we're having our first, we're doing a few mini fundraisers um, through the spring. Our first one is this Saturday um, in the high school cafeteria. Mrs. Zara is going to lead with some story time and activities. Um, it's going to be a pancake breakfast. Um, for the, is it her? Her? She is. <laughs> yeah, we all have seen her. So twenty dollars a family, and then next Friday night at Pino's, we're doing a. There's going to be a trivia night, which I believe that's also twenty dollars. It's the magic number. But um, when's the pancake one again? You're not. I'm sorry. When's the pancake one again? That Saturday. sounds very. This Saturday. Yeah. This Saturday. So I have two kids that like pancakes. Don't go. Good. There you go. And I'm sure I love Miss Sarah. For sure. Yeah. So that's true. Yeah. So maybe we could repeat the details. Where, when? At the high school cafeteria. At the high school cafeteria. I, well, what time are we starting? I think 9. 9. Yeah. 9 has to 11, 9 to 12. Has it gone out via paperless? Yeah, it's gone, actually, it has gone out paperless. So yeah, you want to check, the, check your paperless. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll be sending it out again by the, by the end of the week, just to be persistent. Where are you guys going this year? To the, um, cook, the Cook Rec Center, Cook College. <clears throat> nice. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. So. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else on this year? Yes. It's your show. Um, Okay, let's proceed with the uh, enrollments for the uh, month of January in Ir at Irving, 314 students, five transferred in, 10 transferred out, at Bartle, 462, five transferred in, six transferred out, at middle school, 333, three transferred in, one transferred out, the high school, 465 students, one transferred in, three transferred out, we have a total of 1574, 1,574 students um, for the month of January. Okay. Israel, I have a question. Yes. Do districts track mobility rates and we take can. a look at that? I mean, I was just wondering if that's yeah, mandated can. reporting. Because yes. I mean, it's kind of interesting to look at. You know, Do we have an average mobility rate? Do we have no, a we, we can greater track than that. average? Absolutely, sure. Would you like that? Yeah, I personally, I would. I don't know if anybody else would be interested in that. Sorry. I mean, I think it's, it's just interesting information to have, because certainly yes. mobility Trends, yeah. it turns, Absolutely. you know, translates we can do that. into achievement and Absolutely. all sorts of things. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I'll we're below 1,600 again for a while. Yes, we are. Okay. Today, uh, the district uh, went through an extensive uh, process, the QSAC. Um, that's quality single today? accountability continuum. Yeah. Today was our QSAC. Dude, your eyes it was are still a very, open. That's mm, amazing. <laughs> a very extensive process, but I want to thank uh, publicly Jen Knapp and Bill Schlala for their leadership in uh, facilitating the process and with the entire QSAC team. So I'm very appreciative for the hard work uh, that they put into this. I think we did very well. Um, and having said that, we we have new mascots. Uh, one of the things that we've been working very diligently in is uh, improving our communication and also branding the district, and one of the areas that we've been looking at is uh, rethinking, re-looking at the school mascots. Um, if there's anything that we would like is con uh, you know, some continuity across all of the schools. And so uh, are we ready to share what the new mascots look like, uh, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. We have them? Yeah, we do. Um, this could be the I'm most. This could. Like this it. could literally be the most contentious thing. Of the there we go. <laughs> no, they've been, they've been approved by kids, teachers, and the administrators. We're just sharing with the community. Not, 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 <laughs> not, not the, Is this still an hour? And, right. <laughs> and not, not. It has to be approved by the alumni. 
I think I, th I think you're gonna love it. I th I, I think they're nice. I, th I think they're good. I hope. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. It better not be the animal. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I think it has. Jared, I'm okay with that. I, I, I don't know. Like can you use a mic? First, I must apologize. We had a lot better presentation, but as soon as I put it on this machine, technology, it rebooted the machine four times. Um, so yeah, what we're doing, Saskia and myself, with the guidance of Israel, put together new mascots. We took it to the principals first. They all loved them. So then we took it to their staff, and with some minor tweaks from recommendations from the staff, we all came upon these mascots. So let's take a look. And of course, the clicker's not going now. What did he say? Here's the new Irvin mascot. And what's, the, what's on the shoulder? Well, that's on the, in every mascot. Should I tell them, or should I let them find them? No, you should look at it carefully. Yeah. It's now, I know, I know it's now. Oh. I see the owl. All right, well, let's go to Bartle, and you can see. As you see, the owl grows up in every school. So we wanted to incorporate the owl since it's the district mascot. And then when you go into the middle school, the owl, you know, they're, they're hitting that age where they think they, they can do everything. I like that. Start flexing their wings, and then we get into the high school, and we have them ready to go. Owls of what? Oh, HP. HP, okay. holding the HP and the owl symbol. Okay. All right. What's up with that? So, are is we ready? Sorry, is there another word there? Yeah, H it says owls and it's holding the H and the P. Is in there each an O call. F between the clouds? Oh. 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 Owls up oh. in the park. Got it. Okay. Comments? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I well. like one clap. <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask, um, did, the students, <laughs> did the students see these yet? I don't believe the students, it was just the staff and the administration saw them. Okay. However, this particular mascot, uh, this was an offshoot of a, a one that was drawn, right? It was painted in the yes. high school. If you walk in the front That's of the high school, and, and yeah. right in between the doors, there's a huge owl. Saskia tried working on it. We tried getting a picture of it. It, it, it just has so many colors and details to it. We can't put it in there as the mascot, but it will be incorporated into the high school page. We are going to work on that. And we discussed that with Mr. Lasseter and the student that drew it. So, uh, my my initial reaction is that from at least from here, I can't make out that it's an HP. The of HP is hard to see. Yeah. yeah. Well, the of I can see. Just the a, the H looks like it's covered by the talons. Okay. I'm just. I agree. Uh, I love them. Aside from that, though, they're they're fantastic. I I agree that it's a little unclear, but. Well, um, a great and, and, and please, Skoska did the drawing. She did the vector. Thank you. Hold on. No, we can't. We can't. Sorry, Saskia. We can't do. No, 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 we can't, we can't, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, I know what she's trying to say. You can come, you can. She, 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 she could join me. Yeah, you, okay, feel free to fine. come up and make a presentation, but I, we can't. I know what she's saying, the colors aren't coming as yeah. good, as crisp as they should be. So, all right, so let's, Jar, um, <laughs> no, I like him, and I really appreciate the work by you and, by you and Saskia to put this together. Um, what does the board want to do in terms of uh, moving forward with uh, the new mascots, I don't think. Um, I think where I think we as the board should weigh in on on them um, and the larger community and students. I'd as like well. a little time to digest them. Yeah, I think. yeah. So I would like. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. Mm, add? Yeah. I think this is very meaningful for the kids. Yeah, agreed. And I think that this is something they should definitely have a say in. Okay, I agree. Okay. I mean, I don't know that that means uh, taking a vote or anything. Right. I, I don't know. But even just to let them comment would yeah. be meaningful. I remember well, when I was here, when we changed the mascot, there were like three or four options, and we voted on uh, one, one, one of them. OK. Go ahead. Um, well, I just want to say that the uh, student who painted the owl is senior Jana Choi. Mm -hmm. And she's an amazing artist, and I just wanted to say that. <laughs> that, that I just wanted to say, is that the same one who did the Friend Finder cover? No. I'm not sure. Okay. It was just an amazing yeah. cover. Yeah. I just wanted to put that out no, there. That was a third grader. It was a third grader. But Jan's choice is a little bit different. Um, the what? Owl. 
No, yeah, them. hers is like rainbow. It's beauty, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to incorporate that into the high school website yeah. the best we can. It just seemed like we, we tried. We tried working with her, and we worked hard on it for a couple of weeks trying to get it. And it's just such detail yeah. and colors that it's very hard to put into the vector image. Maybe yeah. there, maybe Miss Choi would like to help out with that. Ooh, no, she was. She oh, was. she was. She was involved, and then we got into AP time and stuff like that, yeah. and oh. exams. And so. We tried to work uh, the best we could with her. I, um, sorry, Saskia did sit down with her a few times. Okay, cool. So I think let's digest this for a little bit. I think we should uh, have a conversation about how to move forward, and I think we should include more people yeah. in that conversation. Um, I like them in my initial reaction. Um, it just... Uh, it's a big. It's for me. It's a big decision. I'm right. sure for everybody. It's just it's, oh, it's our it's our it's our branding. And for me, I, I see a different owl I'm when I see it. I'm sure Saskia actually sees a different owl when she sees it as well. And, and I'm here every year with uh, you guys when the owl comes yeah. up. When and I definitely yeah. know Jerry sees an owl. Um, no, I think they're, they're great. It's beautiful, yeah. and I like to have the owl yeah. on the little. I mean, you know, Irving Bartle, the middle school. Those are different. But I think the high school. I don't yes. understand how why you, you change your mascot. Like our colors are. Maroon, you know, the right, maroon right. white or maroon and yeah. gray, whatever. Yeah. And the owls should be, to me, the owl that it's always been, but that's just my opinion. So, not that these are not beautiful, right. but it's not. And I guess, I mean, I know there's Irving Dragon, there's the yeah. Bark yeah. Dolphin, we, but we always, and those are traditional, but right. I mean, the little owl is adorable. It's adorable. Yeah. What, what is a great idea. have the baby owl yeah. rub well, up. Well, what, <laughs> well, because that that's has more back to tradition well, also, because I was a dragon and... Oh, I know, and yeah, the yeah. hat turning ceremony oh, in, in Irving is precious. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do away with it. I mean, I, it's just a question. Just a question. But I think it's nice no. to have the students weigh in. Right. I mean, yeah. I love the first three for sure. I don't, I'm not too familiar with the high school mascot, but well, those one, first three are fantastic. One thing we found out when we were looking at all the logos, because we did research the logos, we don't own the copyrights. Then we knew that. Else. So now we do. Yeah. This, since this Scott, Saskia took care of this, we own the copyright to all this. Okay. And that was a major thing right. when we were going through this. I mean, we lost our owl because we got a cease and desist letter to stop using our owl. What? Yeah. That really and and that actually, and when we researched yeah, the urban dragon, we found the urban dragon out there also. Wow. Yeah. But you know what? That so wasn't even our owl anyway. Right, our owl is the owl no, that's I mean, on the scoreboard out there. The, you know, yeah. That's the owl. Our owl is just the face. Yeah. The, the, the Someone's yeah. CND to high school? That's crazy. Huh? Yeah. I mean, so what this is important, this also leads into the new website. So the logos are very critical okay. to the new website. I mean, and moving it forward. Um, so let's. Let's have a. Let's, the website is happening? The website, well, the, we had the report at last meeting uh, that we were moving forward with. I've, I wasn't sure that we hired anybody to do the website. I believe it's on tonight's agenda. Oh. Well, okay. it was all is it on tonight's agenda? No, I think last we, meeting. We, we, we talked about it, but we didn't vote. Yeah, we is, didn't that, vote. Is, that, is that a vote or yeah, better for vote? vote? Yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. It was I know you guys have been working on just, it. For just really quick, is it critical to have the of HP on the high school now? I mean, we well, take we'll recommendations. I mean, we, we have time to, to play around. Play around, all right. Let's. Let's digest it. Let's take Darcy's suggestion and digest it a little bit. Um, we'll have comments uh, and try to figure out a game plan to include more people in the process as well. And I mean, would you like it, like us to take it to the students, have administration take it to the students also, or do you want? What's what is what the you, board's? What do you guys want to do? What is the board's view on that? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Yeah, as long as it's not too onerous for the. I mean, I don't know what the best way to do it is, but it might be. Right. It might be meaningful for the kids to have a say. Yeah. But I don't know that I I anticipate issues if there's a vote, you know, with certain age groups because they might, you know, get offended if they didn't, you know, you didn't vote for the one I liked. I don't right. know. I mean, I just imagine yeah, different age right. groups might yeah. have an issue. We should spend a lot of time on this. No. Yeah. No. no it's, it's a great, you know, it's a great idea. I just know that it's very meaningful yeah. for the kids. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll talk to the principals and see how they want. I mean, we took it to the art departments. So the art teachers did see it, and if they shared it with their students, I, I'm not sure. But we'll talk to the principals, and we'll let them get it to the students. Okay. okay. 
know, once again, the, the, the goal here was, number one, to brand the district. Yeah. I mean, when, when we came on board and we were looking at the, the mascots, they're all mascots that were being used from other places, and, and that's really not the process of branding a district, uh, particularly where we're at a, a, a very fertile time um, for, for more reasons than one here at Highland Park. And I, I don't mean to, because I, I know at Irving we have a lot of, a lot of teachers that are expecting uh, 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 babies, but <laughs> so more ways than one. We're, we're, we're standing on fertile ground, and, and, and this is uh, the optimal moment right now to really brand the district. I, I want to take a moment to actually also commend Saskia, yeah. because she is a volunteer, and she puts enormous, enormous amount of hours to make this thing work. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're encouraged of what we're seeing, and, and, and ultimately the vision here is to improve communications, and she has set up already external and internal communication processes that, that are starting to work. Um, and so we're, 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 we're reaping the reward. Of, of having her as a volunteer. So, Saskia, thank you so much for, for your valuable work. Adam, may I, may I add something? Mm -hmm. I, I just thought that the newsletter was fantastic. This last Did you like very it? detailed newsletter is beautiful and interesting. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so, so once again, thank you. And, and as you know, we, and we already know this, uh, uh, you know, Chris is a, uh, it's an integral part of this. And, and without him, what can we do? So there's this combination between Saskia and, and Chris. It's, it's, uh, we're reaping the rewards. So, Perfect. So thank you. OK? So I, I would like to share. So uh, Linda and I, we, we've been uh, working very diligently in preparing a comprehensive uh, budget. Uh, we, our intention is for a three-prong report. Uh, this is only the first. So this is a very general report, but we want it to be as clear, as comprehensive as possible. And uh, I believe the next one is scheduled for March 9th, is it? March 9th will be the second report, and that'll be even even more comprehensive. So um, we want you to give you all of the information humanly possible so you can understand um, where we're at and where we're going and what we need to do as a community to get there. Um, so here we go. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Linda. It's going to go right through. Yes. All right, so when we look at major changes in terms of our revenues, what we take in, if we look at the 2% cap, at 2%, we're looking at $464,000 for property taxes. We can't give you a number right now for in terms of state aid because we have not received state aid. Uh, we should be getting that very soon. Yes, Linda? By Friday, we should be you know, having a good, strong idea of what our state aid is going to be. Uh, we're looking at the reduction of use of capital reserve, which is 224. And I'm going to go through each and every one of them. But uh, through the use of waivers because of increased enrollments and the health benefit increases exceeding that 4%, we're looking at the changes in terms of our revenues of 242945 So that's step one. Those are revenues. Israel? Go on to the next one. Yes. I'm sorry. Could you or Linda explain? Get, wait, 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 wait. I, I, by the time we get to the end, it's going to be. Uh, okay. Can you just explain what reduction in use of capital reserve means? Uh, yes. In the current year, 2014-15, uh, we budgeted to you to take out of capital reserve $674,000, which was uh, purposed to fund the uh, Bartle window replacement project. In the 2015-16 budget, uh, we are uh, proposing to withdraw $450,000 from the capital reserve fund to uh, do some boiler replacements at the high school. So the amount that we are you, taking to support the budget is reducing by 224. It's the 674 this year versus the 450 next year. So that's, that's part of our total revenue uh, number. But the other pieces, we don't know if any other pieces are, are going to increase. And the waivers is uh, the option of the board. 
I'm going to ask all board members to hold questions to the end. It's, this is a long presentation, and if we there are going to be a lot of questions, and just if we interrupt Israel at every chance, it's we're never going to get through it, and it's and it will lose the uh, overall message within the budget. So please just let's if we could hold questions to the end, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so so in other words, last year we spent let's say six hundred thousand, right? for uh, the, the windows. We're targeting to spend over $400,000 for new boilers. Our boilers are very old. Um, they're about to break down. All right? We cannot wait any longer. So if, it, it, just clearly, if you look at the 600 that was spent last year, plus the 400 that we intend to spend, the difference between that is what? The 200,000. That is the capital reserve that we have. Yes. The, uh, when you look at the expenditure side, you'll see that capital outlay expenditures also are reducing by the 224000 So that is a one for one. Revenue and, and expenditures will both be going down by that same amount. Okay, if that helps. Let's go to the next slide. So now budget reductions. And by the way, we've been sharpening our pencils on this one. All right, I want to share with you what we've done thus far. We're looking at, in terms of salaries, a total reduction of $309,566 in salary reduction. Where does that money come from? Well, we had an assistant superintendent, right, for curriculum. That's the salary. We had the data specialist, right, Ralph Hogan. Hogue, right, he left, all right. We saved some money uh, for uh, the retirements that we, we had this particular year. Plus, we reduce curriculum writing costs of $5,900, right? So instead of incurring that expense for additional curriculum writing, we saved it. And we might need it for curriculum writing for next year. All right. So th for consideration at this particular juncture, and this is a conversation that we continue to have, is would it, be, would it make a lot of sense to save additional monies in another assistant superintendent? And remember, before you had two assistant superintendents, right? If we save money with one. The second one will cost $145,000. That's salary plus, let's go to the next one. All right, plus the benefits. And if we look at employee benefits, um, the reductions has been 155727 because employers now are contributing more premiums, all right? In addition to that, with our maintenance, uh, heating and air conditioning, the contract, we had a conversation with our maintenance crew and they said, you know what, we can save you an additional $20,000 because we'll, we'll fix whatever needs to be fixed in-house, therefore saving the district $20,000. Central office, we decided to cut also some areas in central office in the reduction of the phone costs, the copier costs, our reduced costs of other benefits, meaning the FICA, pensions, so we reduced that by $31,000. In addition to that, we saved some money in our utilities, uh, you know, based on the current efficiencies that we already have. As you know, the lighting system, we've saved a ton of money with the lighting system that we have. We, we saved about $21,000 in one particular year. We did, uh, we have new windows, but we have no data to justify and to actually prove that we've been saving money on the windows because they were just installed. But we do have the data knowing that we have been saving money with our utilities, particularly in the areas of, of um, electric. All right. Continuing with budget reductions, I sat, we both sat with Bill Schlala, the director of, interim director of special education, and uh, you know, we, we, we impressed the, uh, told him the importance of reducing that. Now, now mind you, all of the reductions that we're proposing will not affect kids. It's not taking away you know, the, 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 the resources away from the classrooms, all right? So these are more areas that we, we looked into. So we decreased the tuitions uh, because of fewer kids, and that gave us $57,000. Decreased in-house costs, physical therapists that we reduced for 30,000. Nursing support, this was a nurse that was attending a kid that was bust, we no longer needed her. That gave, we gained an additional 89,000. A Wilson consultant, that we reduced to 12,000. Life skill consultant was eliminated, no longer a need for that. 70,000 and the reduction of supply budgets. That supplies for special ed. We identify a certain number of supplies that were no longer needed. So therefore saving us an additional 12,339. So the total amount of budget reductions targeted this particular year for these areas 
a total of 850,167. Can we cut some more? Probably. Um, I'm not in a position tonight to actually share with you more cuts. See, that's, we really need to sit down and think this carefully. Let's go on to the next. So we have, all right. Now, when we look at the cuts that we've had this year, now we're gonna compare that to the increases that we've had, the cost increases. We had to budget for a number of positions that um, we did not budget for. All right, so uh, Irving, we, the G&T teacher, the art teacher, we had two teachers that, uh, in second grade for Bartle. And as you can see, I don't want to go through the, the rest, but we're looking at about 12 positions, right, that were unaccounted for. 10 or 11 positions that were unaccounted for. And can we go to the next uh, slide? All right, those positions, the total current year, unbudgeted positions, all right, came out to a whopping $495,531 plus, plus the benefits that were unaccounted for that we needed to budget this year. Salary increases. Next year, we're anticipating new positions. That's going to cost this district $209,000. Uh, I know at the beginning of the school year, we spoke a lot about ESL. All right, we want, we would like to provide more ESL services for our kids. Right, that's going to cost us. All right, high school increased teacher, uh, English teacher, from uh, to a full-time position. The high school is going to need an increased uh, math teacher, also a full-time social worker, and two full-time speech therapists. All right, that used to be part-time, but because of the needs that have been identified at the high school, these are positions that we have to prepare for to fill in for next year. The reclassification to general operations budget to comply with the NCLB, No Child Left Behind requirements, is going to cost us $52,700. And the negotiated contracts, right? We're all happy that finally we uh, you know, negotiated a contract with NJEA, but that cost the district an additional $371,431. In addition, health benefits, and by the way, those are just salaries. In benefits, we're looking at a payoff of 567861 for this particular year alone. So current benefits for unbudgeted new hires, which were 10, absorbed by six budget contingencies and savings from resigned and retired staff. So if we look at five anticipated new positions at 108000 right? plus contingency for two new positions that we have to set aside just in case, right? So we're looking at an additional 43,504, and then the anticipated premiums that we have to pay for those new positions. So guys, the premiums are killing us, they really are. We're paying very high premiums. And so we're looking at 415,597. Athletics, we have to replace some worn out equipment at 10, and that's minimum. Minimum, 10550 Maintenance for the custodian, the landscaping, security costs, you know, the boiler replacement. I remember we, we mentioned the boiler replacement, right, out of capital funds, uh, reserve, 450 But that doesn't affect the actual budget. That, that affects the, the capital reserve, all right? So I just want to make sure that you know that's set aside. 450 for the, the boiler replacements. Increased services contract for the year, right? Which is um, $100,000, and that's just on, you know, wages. Um, increased cost of supplies, all right? So $50,000. Those are cleaning supplies, supplies that they need to uh, run the entire district. Continue. All right, in, in addition to that, we're looking at this particular year, uh, hiring a consultant for $40,000, and that's minimum. That's if we were able to even find a consultant that would want to come to this district for three to four hundred dollars a day. All right, that's with the district. All right, the expansion of professional development. We cannot expect teachers to be great teachers and evolve and continue to improve their craft if we're not providing professional development. The amount of money that we're providing for professional development is it's it's. it's it's a shame. So we decided, you know what, we're gonna increase it by $25,000, which will not be controlled thoroughly by the district. So we're proposing, let's not control all the money. 
Let's control part of that money so we can provide professional development to spearhead the initiatives and the vision for the district while giving the rest of the money to each and every school so they can use that money as best they want as best they can to meet the needs of their staff. All right, so that's an additional $25,000. The legal costs for special ed litigation, $15,000. We're spending a ton of money also on litigations. That's another area that's, that's, that's costing this district. Insurance, once again, of 12338 uh, and the increased substitute coverage of $62,000. Now, you might be shocked, $62,000 for subs, but Number one, we have quite a number of teachers that are going on maternity leave. And well, they need to be replaced, right? Because, that's one, because all of the staff development was front-loaded this year, that left us with no professional development days for the year. So during the entire year, we have no time to provide staff with professional development because all of the professional development days were front-loaded at the beginning of the school year. So the types of professional development that the staff in, were engaged in required substitute teachers. All right, so costing the district $62,000. All right, Bartle, the expansion of the robotics program, 1,000. And then we can go through, and these are just, uh, just it's obviously smaller areas, but I think the most expensive one is the Touchstone textbooks. We started a new initiative in grades three, six, and seven, Touchstones. And uh, for next year, if we're looking at expanding, that's going to cost, just in materials alone, the text was $14,000. Um, you know, technology, uh, expansion for robotics program in the middle school, and, and, and on and on. And, all right. For the high school, the Navian College and Career Database, which is a fabulous um, software, the replacement of novels, literature, poetry, textbooks, replacement of textbooks, replacement of desks and chairs, and, and that's needed. I mean, right now we were looking at and assessing the current need of the high school and the current conditions of, of a lot of the uh, textbooks, and, and they're old, they're old. Continue. All right. Uh, so in textbook alone, new textbook, $17,000 for the AP Psychology, for learning Microsoft Office, for the accounting real world. And these are new courses that we're offering the children. As a matter of fact, Adam, you had mentioned that whenever you make new offers, right? Uh, courses, that requires staff development and requires books. All right, so. Uh, algebra, geometry, textbooks, because of increased enrollments in the high school, of $3,000. And musical instruments, I heard the tuba, bassoon, and the clarinet, they're in terrible shape, right? And we're looking at $11,000. All right, so now this is your total. $2,106,429,000, and that excludes the boiler. Go to the next one. So when we compare in terms of the increase of revenues of $242,000, that's how we started this presentation. And we're looking at our expenditures of 932,210. We have a budget shortfall for next year, folks, of $689,265,000. And this is with the over $800,000 that we cut this year. All right, so, so when we talk about tax increases, that's you, right? And I know everyone, oh no. If we look at, at 2%, right? The additional dollars at 2%, uh, let's say, it would be $464,000, yes? Um, all right, that's the total, all right? So you're talking about an annual cost of 77.61, uh, and your monthly, you know, that's that's two percent cap. So that's an additional six dollars and forty-seven cents, give or take a month. That's not enough. It really isn't. I'm going to be honest with you. We're looking at at least four and a half to five percent, that minimum of increase in taxes, just to address the shortfall. As the chart, as the chart indicates. All right, so you're looking at nine hundred, six hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars, right? and that would take care of that shortfall. Okay, next. 
All right, so the current budget also, you know, these are things to consider. You know, the current budget for the charter schools. Not only one, we have various charter schools. All right, you're looking at 562,000 in charter schools alone. All right, that's 2.42%. Right? That's a little over the cap that you have, just in charter schools alone. And you, and, you, and you add to that formula how much we're paying for Hatifka. 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 All right? And we look at if they expand within five years, you can be paying off a million dollars. Scary. Continue. Technology. Huh? speaks for itself. I think before there was like a budget of $35,000 a couple of years ago. Uh, that was increased because we, 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 we are in need of a significant upgrade in our technology and infrastructure here in this district. And it's going to require for, for us just to catch up $150,000. And that's just not this year, for the next few years. And by the time that we finish, Purchasing, you know, updating all of the hardware and updating the infrastructure by the time we finish, we're ready to do it all over again. Okay, so we're looking at approximately $150,000 a year from this point on. Am I, am I, Linda, am I accurate? All right. Searching for better efficiencies. Okay, so now we've been talking. So we need to find better efficiencies for this district. Assistant superintendent, and this is just for consideration, will cost us $145,000 and an estimated $20,000 in benefits. We're looking at doing a better job with scheduling. Now I know this is, a, this is a very tricky issue regarding the sixth period, but the bottom line, that sixth period that we're paying teachers in middle school and in high school is costing this district $375,000 for a sixth period period. So the question is, can we do a better job with scheduling? Is it necessary if we can look at scheduling and get the principals together and get great minds together and see how we can you do a better job with scheduling and be more creative, um, can we save some money with that six period? Realistically, maybe not. Because when you're into a six period, either, either, either you're not doing a great job with scheduling or you can do a better job with scheduling, but you need more people. You need, you need more staff members. So we might not be able to eliminate the $375,000, but if we can cut that in half when well, we're making progress. All right? Teacher classroom uh, composition. So I went to some of the schools and I had some questions about the composition of classrooms. When you look at a certain number of kids that were, that were minimum, I says, can we, can we join two classes together? Because you only had a few. All right, so we're looking at that. All right? We're looking at, um, and by the way, let me make this very clear. We're not saying that we're, we are eliminating kindergarten Paris. That's not what we're saying. I don't want to undergo the guillotine tomorrow morning. Right? <laughs> My role as your interim uh, 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 superintendent is to let you know that if you're interested in keeping six Paris for kindergarten, it is costing the district $135,000 plus a hundred and four thousand three hundred and seventy three benefits for six paris so that's something that should be on your mind we talked about the most effective use of the existing staff pool of paraprofessionals and teacher assistants that's a million one hundred and thirty two thousand one hundred and thirty dollars plus the eight hundred and fifty eight thousand for their benefits so we've been having conversations is it necessary or can we outsource Future, right? Now, are we going to do it? Uh, do it? We're, we're not saying that. We're saying that uh, we should consider it. Is that an option that we have? It might not be. All right. Next. So, so today this is the preliminary budget discussion. The next one is going to be tentatively scheduled for March 9th um, for board approval. This is where we're going to submit to the county our budget. So we have a lot to think about, folks, um, because the time is pressing. We've got a lot of wonderful initiatives that we would like to put in place.
Um, but we're undergoing a shortfall now, and we need as many bright minds as possible to see how we can address the shortfalls and give our kids everything that they rightfully deserve. Okay, we're done. Thank you. Chris, do uh, you want to reset the mics? Thank you. Um, I think, yes, uh, I know, me too. Um, for Israel, I want to thank you for, and Linda, very much want to thank you for that report. That was, I'm sorry Greg Dietz is in here. That was probably one of the best budget reports we've had in a very long time and the most detailed, uh, especially at this stage. So I think it's going to set us up for a lot of good conversations and a, a lot of hard decisions that this board's going to have to make. Um, I'd like to open this, uh, up, this portion up to uh, board questions on the presentation. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I have a few. So, um, Israel, because um, because we ended up having to pay substitutes for professional development this year, have we changed the configuration of professional development next year so that it's spread out over the course of the year? That is correct. So we changed the configuration for professional development. What we've decided to do for, the, for next year is we're front-loading two days all right, prior to the student's arrival, and then we've scheduled for four half-day professional development days throughout the entire year. It was my understanding, by the way, that we were too small a district to use Naviance, um, that it actually opened up issues of, um, of uh, you know, um, privacy, because um, because people would be able to actually tell who was who on Naviance. Mm -hmm. I can look into that. Because we, I know it's something we've broached before, and I know a lot of districts use it and like it. But mm -hmm. I thought that we were sort of under the, under w what would be critical mass. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. What is it? It's a college um, prep and application software system. So it, it sort of keep the kids use it as they're applying to colleges. It keeps track of applications. It sort of does a lot of the work of, of guidance, the, a lot of the grunt work of guidance. It sort of takes care of all that. Um, and a lot of districts use it. But I, I, it was my understanding that because of our size, we were not necessarily good candidates. So maybe that's changed. Yeah, because you can actually, um, you know, there are few enough students, fewer, uh, few enough students so that you could look at somebody's profile and figure out mm. who it is based on some, some parameters. Like there's only, you know, five kids in AP physics and, you know, and like that. Okay. Surely there are confidentiality settings on it. We should find out about that. I mean, maybe we can disable looking at other students' profiles or something. Anyway, um, as a possibility, AP Psych is not a new class. We offer AP Psych now. It was my. Oh, okay. Um, so the social worker going from half time to full time. Can you? Um, two. Can you explain what the what the need is? More students. We have an increase of students uh, in, in the high school. Microphone. I'm sorry. We have an increase of students in the high school. Um, you know, uh, we identify, you know, more students in need of counseling, and which would require two. Right. Um, uh, oh, and so this year, what was the difference between what the state required for us to budget for charters and what we ended up spending? Linda, would you help out with that? Yeah. It, it was about a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was and just a hair. Money, it's in our last resolution. When does that money end up um, getting released? For some well, what happens is we're required to budget for it. Right. Okay. So we can't. Those funds it, but are in. We get the numbers um, in December as far as actual enrollments based upon October fifteenth, and at that at that point we say well. So we, we may not spend this, so we probably could reallocate it. However, we get another um, report at the end of June. Ooh. And they look at the rest of the year's enrollment. So we could get a bill, and we have gotten a bill at the end of June. It could be twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So we can't take all of it out. Uh, so we have to think conservatively and leave something in there, but we are free, so to speak, to use that money elsewhere. So within a certain uh, you know, cap. 
so to speak. And so the one other question is, um, with regard to um, the six period and scheduling, mm -hmm. is there, I mean, have we considered, um, I know that the rotating schedule makes the six period, sort of getting rid of six period payments challenging. Are there other schedules that we might consider that would, um, would alleviate that? Yes, we are. In fact, I met with both the middle school principal and the high school principal. Uh, we're going to continue that dialogue because that needs to happen fairly quickly. Um, someone even had suggested an eight period day. I hate the eight. Yeah. You know, I know you do, but it's, it's, certainly a, it's certainly a model that a lot of schools use with success. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, $350,000 is I, a lot of money. It's a lot of money and a lot it of taxes. Is. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, the, the social worker that um, Ann brought up, the social worker issue, um, I wanted to know if there was any sort of comparison between what we lost with the um, SAC counselor and what two social workers would be. I understand that's two mm -hmm. separate people, obviously, but um, a SAC counselor does renew some other um, capabilities, I guess, that we don't currently have. I know what I'm going to do uh, in terms of the, the two site co counselors uh, for the next board meeting. I'll give you all of the uh, finite details regarding them. Great. Thank you. Okay. And um, I, I did want to ask also about um, the absence of a reading specialist for the Bartle School. I don't believe that we have one on staff. And um, from what I understand, there are situations where children are graduating onto the middle school and not reading at a middle school level, far below, in fact. So I know that there are some parent organizations that are interested in dealing with this on a volunteer level, um, but I don't know if that's happening. Okay. I just have heard, you know, in the neighborhood, but um, I don't know if that's happening. I don't know what that's worth. I don't know that that can really compare with a reading specialist mm -hmm. to diagnose different issues like dyslexia, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, but these things might go unnoticed until middle school, it looks like to me. Gotcha. Okay. For Bartle, mm -hmm. yes? For Bartle, yeah. Are there uh, other questions? Uh, yep, yeah, there's a couple of items on, there are not pages on the presentation, so it makes it hard to go back, but in the, under the cost increases for the service contract, um, $100,000, it looks like just in the contract itself, and then the additional $50,000 for supplies, is yes. that? Uh, when we projected the increase in the contract for custodial maintenance and landscaping services, we budgeted an 18% increase, knowing that when we went out for new proposals, that there was going to be an increase due to uh, the contract agreement between Tempco and the SEIU. Mm -hmm. When we got the proposals from the companies that submitted them, it was actually about $70,000 higher than that. And then there's higher the than an 18% increase yes. Yes. And, year and over year. And the um, contract was not permitted to include custodial supplies, which formerly had been part of the contract because of mm -hmm. public uh, New Jersey purchasing laws. When you go out for an RFP, right, right, right. you're not allowed to include supplies, whereas when you go out for bid, you can. So it would have been that much higher if it had been a bid. Wow. So, yeah, mm, yeah. this is... We've been dealing with this we, for the last. Yeah, we, we knew this was coming. Yep. And we were able to get a delay for a year um, due to the, the good graces of Temco, I'll say. Right. Um, they were able to get an agreement with the SEIU to postpone the contract increases for one year. But, but it was inevitable. We, we'll be going out to bid. Uh, or are we not? Did, did, we, did we not hire the consultant to review the RFP? Um, it's a two-year contract. I'm not so sure. We I thought we were doing some sort of competitive bidding in terms of. We did competitive contracting. Competitive contracting. Right. And we, we're not. So yeah, we're we, done. That's what we're we did a year ago. Okay. All right. Um, are there other questions? I had a, a sort of a procedural question. Yep. I know we talked about doing some town hall type of stuff to yep. let people really have at it with the budget, let yep. the public really say their piece, um, and give us suggestions too, mm -hmm. you know, not for nothing, about, about cuts that could be made. Um, do we want to, is that something we would talk about now? We can talk about it uh, now. I mean, um, it's the sort of a scheduling issue. The show kind of goes on the road um, once we complete okay. the tentative budget. Uh, okay. Israel and I uh, will go to PTO meetings. Um, okay. we, uh, we, we will average the the next the final buzzer, buzzer presentation is the final budget presentation for okay. uh, comment. It's a public hearing specifically on the budget. 
Um, beyond that, that's about what we normally do is the PTO meetings and the special budget meeting. My, uh, if I'm correct about the, the final budget public hearing, that's like one day before the budget has to be submitted, right, to the state? No, there, no or, it's actually uh, due, I think, we have the May 4th meeting as a fallback oh, for so, the approval of the final budget. So the hearing itself has to take place within that uh, a week's time. Okay. The adoption of the final budget, we have a little more time if we needed it. I see. So if the p members of the public had a concern, it could be dealt with. Right. So yeah. we're going to have, we, as we just did through the uh, presentation, pretty much from now until May will be budget conversations at the board table. Okay. Um, there will be a presentation at every board meeting from Israel on our status from our conversations and okay. from as we get state aid number updates. Um, the next board meeting on March 9th will be the preliminary budget, which the board will have to have some conversations tonight and some conversations at the next board meeting. Um, invite the public as well, um, but at that meeting we will present a preliminary budget to the executive county superintendent. Um, he'll have a chance to review that and if he has a chance to redline anything that we put in there that he does not uh, approve, um, but we also have an uh, opportunity to change from there all the way until uh, May 4th, I believe. And can we maybe, and Michelle is the, the liaison to the Public Information Committee, maybe this is something we want to reach out to them about, about ways to reach the broader community, not just our school community, because I think that's yeah. one issue that we ran into last year where a large segment of the community felt left out of the process. And while we may have been talking about it at the board table each time, there's a large swath of the community that's not going to not gonna reach that. So right. maybe this is a good time to reach out to the Public Information Committee and find a way to reach out to the broader community. That's, uh, yeah. We have a meeting on Wednesday this week. Wonderful. So I'll Feel free to talk about it, email myself in Israel or the board yeah. um, from that. Um, uh, I did have one last question. Hold on. Um, hold on. It, Let me we oh, just, uh, the public meetings are advertised, I just wanted to say. The public is invited to all of these meetings, and I think these are the opportunity, the, this is the opportunity for people to weigh in who are not part of the school community, is at a school board meeting in front of all nine of us. Uh, beyond that, um, it's great to invite people to uh, meetings and go on, take the show on the road, as I said, um, but our, our next meetings, and I just want to reiterate it, are going to be about the budget. This is the opportunity for the general public to weigh in um, and the appropriate place to do it as well. Okay. Um, it, am I looking at this correctly, that this doesn't include any state numbers? So anything that comes out to us is in addition to this, or am I looking at that wrong? We haven't included any increase or decrease in state numbers. So you've just left it flat it's from flat. last year. Okay, so if we were to get any increase <laughs> in state aid <laughs> when the governor then has his budget address tomorrow, then yes. that would be on top of Our shortfall this. would decrease. Okay, yeah. so, but Linda, if, have you but it, so this is a two double-edged sword. If we get a decrease in state yes. funding, this is going and to our increase shortfall. our, and then, and then I would just submit that this may be the time where, as a board, we want to engage in a little bit of advocacy in terms of state funding and really take a look at, over the last few years, our state funding level and, you know, where we could be had our numbers from the state not be decreasing each year. Have we heard anything? Uh, have you the heard? numbers won't be coming out until late Thursday. Yeah. Right, but you, you haven't heard any whispers? No, in fact, I, when we had our CUSAC review today, I had a conversation with the executive county administrator. He said that at the county level, they have not heard anything about state aid. They have our heard concerns about lack of state funding, uh, lack of state revenues, mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and a pension, the pension system issue. and a transportation the, system. The fact that they have underfunded the pension system and should they attempt to uh, more ac uh, appropriately fund it, that would certainly impact on other aspects of the state's budget. So. Not to mention That's the all that we know. There's also right. We don't know the, anything. There's really. the court hearing that for the pension system that is in limbo right now. Right. That I think is waiting to see what happens tomorrow in terms of how much money he puts into it uh, to determine. The Where governor really gives go his the budget address tomorrow, yeah. so that'll give us some indication. He may make announcements during that yeah. meeting, but uh, that announce that uh, address address. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Just nobody hold uh, their but, breath. But definitive numbers won't be distributed until late Thursday. Can you let us know as soon as you get those? Yes, yep. please. Mm. Yep. Now, uh, oh, sorry, go. Yeah, go in, in terms of revenue, where you say the increase of waivers, those are the increases above? Yes, waivers um, are the um, exceptions to the 2% property cap. They allow districts to um, raise more property taxes if they have certain uh, 
things, like enrollment increases, which we have, and health benefit increases that exceed 4%, which everybody has. Mm -hmm. All right, but then when we talked about the cost of benefits on the other slides. Rob, you need to get closer to the mic. When we talked about the benefits on the other slides, it was excluding the health benefits? No, that was health benefits. Uh, health benefits. Yes. Uh, Linda, what is our um, max allowable tax increase with waivers? If uh, if we took all the waivers yep. that we could possibly take, I think. Uh, one second. I think so too. I just want to know. Yeah. That's what it said. Yeah. Percent. But we have to qualify for them, right? No, we, we do. Have, we, I'll we tell have you what them, we, we are banked. qualified for. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we. I thought we used. Our I thought no, we, we used did not use everything last year. If we, we took all the waivers, like nine percent last year, we could increase the budget by seven. With the taxes by seven point eight percent. Okay. With just for free. That's for free. Well, <laughs> well no, you that's what we would be allowed to go up to if we use the waivers the state already has told us that we are eligible for. Okay. And then um, on the slide with the, we, you said that we have less kids going out of district, so there's a savings there, and more kids in district, but there's ways to save on the in district special needs kids. Is that correct? It wasn't special needs, it was. I'm not sure. Um, out of district placements? Out of, yeah. so Thank you, out of district yeah. placements. Uh, yep. Are you talking about the slide you just passed? Those are actually cost savings that have already 57? been realized, the ones that you were looking at. Uh, yeah, those are, we, we looked at the projections for the students that we know we're going to be sending out next year. And because there are a lot of that graduated or aged out or possibly moved out of district, we have fewer students going. And even though the tuition rates do increase, the net effect was a negative this year, which is very rare. Okay. We're hoping that we haven't forgotten somebody. <laughs> Are there any other questions? A quick one about the technology budget, the yep. uh, $150,000 uh, technology priority slide. Um, that's already included in the calculation of revenues. Oh, okay. Yes. I wasn't sure if that was something we wanted to do on top of. No, we're just explaining to you uh, the priorities in the area of that technology budget and how uh, we have a lot of infrastructure needs that are, you know, dire, dire needs. Okay. So uh, there is a significant amount of that uh, technology budget that's addressing those needs. Okay. Thank you. Um, yep. Do we know overall where the district is going with these technology purchases? Like, is it, what's the desire here? Are we just replacing what's broken or do we have a long-term goal? So the long-term goal right now, I had a conversation with, uh, with Brian, and the long-term goal is to replace these old computers that we have. But, you know, more than just replacing, you know, we, we, look at, we, we need to look at the, the, the hardware that we're purchasing and connect them with um, instructional programs so the kids can best use them. Um, and so the conversation that we've been having is the Chromebooks, professional development, instructional programs within the Chromebooks. That's for what time. So I guess the question, and I agree with the question actually. So we, we are, when we are purchasing, uh, we are tying our purchases to instructional needs and instructional programs that we're anticipating to expand? That is correct. Okay. And um, one small thing, I think it was worth $14,000. That's not I, small. Yeah, well, comparatively. <laughs> yeah. Um, was tech, uh, textbook touch replacement? Uh, no, not touchstones. That was even more, no, right? No, oh, no. Touchstones was 14,000. The question I had was about replacement textbooks, not for damaged mm -hmm. textbooks, but it was 4,800. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm under the impression that there's a policy that if students lose a textbook or damage a textbook, that they are not required to replace it out of pocket. They can't graduate. They can't graduate without uh, paying back or returning their textbook. Is my understanding. That's how it was when I went to school. That's how it was too. when I went to yeah. school. Right. So, so it only applies to seniors. No. If, uh, well, I, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, no, I believe that the replacement textbooks would be worn out textbooks mostly. Okay. Worn out or damaged, but not necessarily in from well, students. Right. Regardless, I think that that's, I mean, so do you think we have a policy that says nobody, and it's not um, needs-based, the it's policy? It's not needs-based, okay. no. It's that 
I, I was unclear as to what this was, but this was something that was brought to my attention, was that there is no need, apparently, to replace a textbook at the end of the year, regardless of graduation. But, um, you know, as I remember, you had to put your name in the textbook. Yep. You had to hand it back in the same There's a number. quality that it was given to you, in the same condition. There's a number that's assigned to you. Yep. So I was under the impression that that was still applicable in public schools in general. Can you guys look into that, please? We, I, I think that's still being done. In I fact, hope we, so. we, we have a high school um. student. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as I know, that's the, the same way we do it. I mean, I, I don't, mm -hmm. like, if you don't return a library book, like, you, they don't give you your graduation thing. So I, I think it applies to textbooks as well. I would assume so, but I don't know why. It's an, I think it's. An, I think it goes down to a matter a matter of enforcement more than ah. policy. So right. I believe that it is the policy. I, I mean, I I will we'll have them look into if, it and if, get back to I, us. If I but, may comment, yeah. I'm the one who collects the money. Yeah. I get money for replacement te for lost textbooks and lost okay. library books. We do. They do collect the money. Okay. Um, whether everybody's doing an, what they're supposed to do, I don't know. But I do know that we do collect money at the end of the year for that. It could be an enforcement. I mean, but after a while, textbooks, you know, are too right. to use. Yeah. 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 I mean, right. they need right. to be replaced. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm no. looking at the amount of money that we're spending on textbooks, and I'm thinking every single one of those textbooks is expensive. Mm -hmm. So that if we're not, you know, tying up loose ends and making sure that those things are returned or in good shape, I mean, I that know. might be something. But, you know, my other concern was the cost of the Touchstones program. I don't remember that being a part of the presentation originally. I don't recall that there was any um, More presentation. number the presentation on touchstones when we that's because um, this year the Ed Foundation has um, has uh, has I agreed see. to provide money for it. Um, so so if we're not happy with the program or if we're not happy with the bill, if we're not happy with the program and it's not working, uh, then we won't pursue the program for next year. Okay. Uh, and so the input that the teachers are going to provide us at the end of the year is going to be invaluable. Yes. Right now we started at uh, third, uh, sixth, and seventh grade. We okay. would like to expand that. Um, we'll see. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Well. All right. I have, I have, no, I have a few questions. Um, Read, I want to talk about Read 180. Uh, Read 180 was a program we purchased probably about 10 years ago. We're looking to buy new, buy new um, textbooks and other material for it. I want to make sure that that is the best program for the time uh, that we're at right now. I um, mean, it's not something that we might want to replace the whole program because there could be, I, I would assume that since we bought this program, there could be new programs out there uh, that may be uh, better uh, for this particular subset of uh, students. So I just want to ask you to look into that to see um, if this is the best spot to spend our money. Um, what else do I have? Um, life skills. The consultants. Can you talk about the life skills consultants and uh, the other consultants in there, what their main purpose are and what they're going to be focusing on? Uh, well, the life skills consultant was, uh, I think, a startup they were. cost. Yeah, was it was a, a one-year um, consultant mm -hmm. just to get the program started. So that's why it's going away. Okay. Um, are you talking about the other the consultants Wilson, yeah, on that the, same and one? The Wilson, the reductions. I, uh, I believe the Wilson consultant was um, for specific students to give them uh, specialized training. Uh, these would be students with IEPs that uh, require Wilson training or Wilson uh, services. Um, the physical therapist, I believe they simply reduced the um, estimated number of hours they would need for the physical therapist consultant to meet with uh, certain students. And uh, Israel touched on the uh, nurse. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, one or two students. Uh, it might just be one that was taking a bus um, to a, a uh, school for the handicapped. And uh, the nurse needed to be on the bus. And apparently now the nurse does not need to be on the bus. They still need a, a nurse at the school, but uh, they've reduced the number of um, hours or the estimated cost that, of that nurse to be at the school. Okay. Uh, Israel, I was wondering if you could go into more detail on the uh, effective use of existing staff pool, um, paraprofessionals, teaching assistants of, this, of a million dollars. Well, right now, I, I, 
had this conversation with Bo Shlala, and I was looking at the number of power professionals that we have in this district, and I find it to be a little bit excessive. Um, we might need them, and so we're looking into to match every single power professional in this district with a student or with a class. So we're putting them all into one pool and we're matching them to make sure that if we have 50 to 55 power professionals, that we need every single one. Because if we don't, well then we have some money that we, we can save there. That's one piece. The second piece is that we're noticing some, particularly with the um, with the team teaching, the collaborative team teaching classes, um, can we consolidate some of those? And so we're looking at that. Therefore, saving the district probably $80,000 more. That's one less teaching position. What do you mean by Could consolidating yeah, the them? Because yeah, that's, because that's it, generally one per grade level. So right. how would you See, consolidate Because that? we're noticing in, um, I believe it was at Irving, um, there was one particular class that only had like four special need kids. And so the question is, if there's only four here and four in the other class, why can't we just convert, put eight, which legally can be done? And so we're looking meaning into that. Two, what other two, legalities? Meaning right, two that's collaborative right. classes exactly. in one grade level? Exactly. Oh. And so I question that. And, and Mr. Shlala, he's looking into that to see, can we do a better job? And, and how do we redistribute children in a way that it's legally? Um, that will save us money. And so we're looking into that. I just want to add Can I raise it? it might not be possible, but we're looking into it. We just want to make sure that all of the classes are being configured the right way with the yeah. correct number of kids, with the correct number of teachers. My daughter didn't have a collaborative class, but my two cents, we lived through the para-professional-less kindergarten experience, mm -hmm. and it was kind of chaotic. I don't... In kindergarten? Think, in kindergarten. I think kindergarten, it was about 21 children in the classroom, mm -hmm. and the one teacher was a maternity leave replacement, which happens often in Irving <laughs> for some reason. Well, so yes. they're young. They're, you know, they're having families. But um, this year was um, difficult, and I was finding myself in the classroom volunteering almost every day just to make sure that there were another pair of hands. I don't know if that's possible to have volunteers take the place of paraprofessionals, but um, you know, in a collaborative classroom, I would imagine that it'd be a totally different thing. But well, we have also, and particularly in collaborative classrooms, there are legalities. I mean, there are, we are mandated to have a paraprofessional in that right, classroom. Right. Now, in addition to the paraprofessional, if we want to have volunteers, well, that would be an extra bonus. But I think le legally, we're required to have a paraprofessional. Two teachers, one special education teacher, one regular education teacher, and a paraprofessional. Right. Yeah. Jerry. Adam, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I, was, do, I thought that we had uh, uh, paras in every kindergarten class. That's we do now. We do. But we, do. we stopped it for a while, right? And then we, and we would have. I think it was three years ago. Yeah. yeah. And do we know how many paras we have in total? We have a total of six paras in uh, kindergarten. I mean, total no, in the whole district. We don't know. Just yeah, wow, we have like 50. Uh, 50 paras? Like 50, 50, 51, was it? Um, what's that? Fifty. Point Fifty. Three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it always cracks me. Okay. I know. I know. Right. Point three. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, oh. Sorry, Jerry, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we're not suggesting that we're going to relieve Paris. What we're saying is, you know, we're going to look at the number of Paris that we have. Are they in the right positions, the right classrooms, and do we have some that are unaccounted for, or we have too many? That's what we're talking about. Okay. Got it. If I could ask a quick question about the collaborative classrooms, in uh, particularly at Bartle and Irving, uh, Mr. Schlela very kindly came to a recent CPAC meeting and spoke about that with with parents. And I know he expressed a feeling that oftentimes team teaching is not effective. Um, he didn't go into details, but why he thought that, I assume it's one sort of one branch of educational philosophy feels that that's not effective. Um, and I, I'd just like to comment that before we make any decisions about that, I, I hope the board will sort of hear about it and have a chance to discuss it. I mean, there are parents at this meeting who were sort of, who were taken aback, realizing that there had been some team-taught collaborative classes that perhaps had not gone as smoothly as they could have, but 
uh, that the thought was that perhaps the concept of team teaching w was a good one. Um, so I, I just hope that I, I hope that we'll have a good chance to discuss that if any structural changes are made. Uh, we, we won't rush into judgment. We won't rush into decisions. Uh, this is a preliminary conversation. Fantastic. These are things that I'm looking at and I'm asking questions. Okay. Um, I, you know, I'm one that my experience uh, when I was a principal, uh, I converted most of my regular ed, uh, you know, my special needs, uh, 12 to 1 to 1, to collaborative te teaching. Mm -hmm. So we went school-wide collaborative because it was working. I love that. Um, the only way it's going to work, it's got to be a good match. Right. You know, when you have right. two teachers, it's got to be that perfect match. We were very fortunate that we were able to, you know, find teachers that wanted to work together, that worked together very nicely. So it worked for our school. Uh, if it's not working, we're going to have to look at a different model. But um, that's a continued conversation that we'll be having with, with not only Bill, but with parents also. Mm -hmm. OK, that's great. I, I mean, I, I hope that the model won't be thrown out because of collaboration issues with particular teachers. I mean, I, I know, for example, there's some situations that people are not happy about, you know, whatever. Some people probably are, some aren't. Um, but I hope that the model will still, mm -hmm. will not be thrown out lightly. No, we're, we, okay. we, we, I haven't said that. I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to signal my concern. So, uh, just uh, so one, hold if I, can I just do one quick follow-up on that? Because um, Israel had said something about, you know, taking a look at all of the staffing and how classrooms are best configured. And um, do we have, or do you personally have a philosophy in terms of what's a, a good class size, what class size you wouldn't go over, or what class size you don't want to go under. I mean, because I think if you're looking at staffing, that's kind of one of your most important, um, you know, one of the most important things you're looking at is to how many kids you would put in a class. Well, my philosophy, you might not be able to afford. Right. You know? right, 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 right. <laughs> I don't think we can afford uh, all of our qu qu Quite frankly, I, I do believe in reduced class sizes for early childhood. I don't, I don't think uh, there should be more than 20 students from K1 yep. and 2. Yep. That's my own personal. That's you know, as a principal for 13 years, I didn't have one child over 20. Okay. That was a philosophy. All right. And then what about in? Uh, you know, from uh, from third through fifth grade would be like 25, sixth, seventh, and eighth, no more than 30. Yeah. Because in, in particularly in junior high school, the numbers just grow out of control. You know, because this is you know particularly with the kindergarten paras and with these kinds of issues, this is where we run straight up to the charter school debate because we have one charter school, which is offering two teachers in every classroom, wow. and we have another charter school, you know, which if we don't have paras in kindergarten, they've got paras over there. Of course. So you know, yeah. if, if there are certain offerings that we can't really tinker with terribly mm -hmm. much because there's another free alternative in another town mm -hmm. that someone can go to and then we just we save the money here and we lose it on and the then other you lose end it on the other end exactly mm -hmm. so you know we can't save money and cost ourselves money at the yeah, same time yeah, I agree but we also have to acknowledge that the reason some of those reasons that some of our students leave are not always directly correlated to that one example there are multiple reasons and sometimes we have to make a good decision in terms of what the overall district is best prepared to do um, so after this presentation, uh, Israel and Linda will um, take our comments and prepare a draft budget. Um, is there anything that, in particular, that should not be included that we spoke about tonight? Is there anything that anybody is thinking about that should be included in an overall budget? We need to give them some guidance. Um, we don't, they will prepare us and we'll have another comment, a chance to comment on it. Um, but just if anybody has any further comments, uh, now is the time or hold your peace for a week or two. I mean, I have certain global concerns about staffing and stuff like that. I don't know if now is the time for me to go into my whole philosophy. I mean, I, I fear that perhaps we need additional guidance staff at Bartle, social worker staff, something of that nature, because of the nature of the disciplinary situations that have been going on. Um, I am concerned about the transition from Bartle to middle school and the reading issues that some students have experienced. So, you know, there are some kind of global concerns I have. This is more than the appropriate time. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure, like, I can... Say, Say. I think we should budget fifty thousand right. dollars more for you know, but that is a concern that I have, and I don't know how other board members feel. But then Israel, Israel and uh, Linda should take those, that into okay. consideration and look into that, look into those concerns. So we're not adding it at the final budget. Uh, if we yeah. add, if we add it next time um, and have the conversation next time, we'll be prepare everybody for. Okay. Well, thank you. We're looking at Read 180. I would certainly also like consider say that we should consider looking at Study Island. I think that is a reviled yes. Yes. program throughout the district. Um, I've personally looked at it myself. I find it to be tremendously low quality. Okay. Um, and I'd like to know exactly what we're spending on it and what we're using it for and if it's something we want to continue. Okay. I think if you ask the kids, they would probably agree. Okay. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, I definitely, I think we should um, take the conversation on uh, six periods to the next level. Um, I think you should be having that with the principals and uh, so forth, and and Kim and the and the uh, and the teachers as well. Right, because I would actually like to know if we go to a straight eight, do we get rid of do we get rid of right. a big chunk of that three thirty five? I believe so, and this is a conversation we've been having. Um, I'm going to continue this conversation this week with the principals, but you know, it, when, when we're looking at the the, the six period, um, if we can eliminate the six period altogether, we will. But please remember that we have to abide by you know, the contract, right. and we really do. And we cannot eliminate the six period and overload the teachers anyway. Um, so, and that's a conversation that I'll be having with Kim, and with the teachers, and with the principals. So while you know, I see myself well, part of my responsibility is to make sure that we're fiscally sound, but my, my responsibility is also to ensure that uh, we're being fair to the teachers and the kids are getting what they really need. Well, I, I mean, if we go to, you know, I, I'm not suggesting that we, that we somehow you know, are in, in violation of the contract. I mean, if we go to a straight eight and and teachers are teaching the five periods a day, um, w you know, would that eliminate the the three seventy five? I, I guess that's the question. That's 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 yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think so, but I definitely want. I would. I definitely think that needs to be pursued from both angles, from the, the, the legal side and the communication side as well. Um, furthermore, an assistant superintendent. I think we need to start looking at possibilities um, for staff. It may not be that exact title um, or that position, but to find uh, curriculum staff to go into this district um, in some in some capacity. Um, I also had another question. Go ahead. In Sorry. addition to the 40000 that was allocated within the budget here? Yeah, a, a, posi a position to oversee all of, all of the uh, curriculum um, and instruction. I don't know if one superintendent, we have not had one superintendent do all of that ever um, besides, besides this year. And I think we need to evaluate uh, how much work is on your plate and versus how much is getting done and how much could be done. And I don't think a superintendent is going to be able to do that kind of work. What we're, what we're suggesting is the possibility, and this is like a possibility, something to consider. If you eliminate the position of assistant superintendent, you have to then get a curriculum supervisor. And that's just, but if, if, if we're able to find a good curriculum supervisor or director, all right, that will save this district at least $50,000. Right. Right. Be Let's say at eighty, ninety thousand dollars for a curriculum supervisor, you know, as opposed to one hundred and forty, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a super, uh, assistant superintendent. So that's something. Right. Okay. And would that be like I think that will, I think that will be the route. I think that will be the route that we ended up go, end up going. Mm -hmm. It just we need to we need to figure out what how we're going to fill that role and what that role is going to be. Absolutely. And I'm sorry. Would that be a part time teacher, part time supervisor, or just a straight oh, this supervisory? Is a, this position? is a straight supervisor, straight supervisor full time. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can't handle all the. Um, yeah. uh, observations by yourself even you, you need somebody it's been, it's been you need this year. yeah I know so in the spirit of consolidating and consulting um, it might be something that we want to talk about when we talk about gifted and talented teachers that are you know just here for gifted and talented students if we can talk about how many students they are responsible for you know and and figure that out, that might help the conversation along. Because I think that those teachers are valuable in terms of enrichment for all the students. And that might help with reading, that might help with math, right. that might help with other things. Um, if we use that gifted and talented teacher as a consultant um, for all of the teachers in Bartle and Irving especially, so that you know we could revisit that plan, um, it's not necessarily you know, a, a bad thing what we have now, but it might be something that we need to consolidate as well. And that might be something we can spread that money around to different classrooms, you know. Okay. I don't, yeah. The point is we'll take. Yeah, we just have to see if the fit and sure. all that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great if she could do some, if the G&T position could also be used for some reading specialist stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice catch. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, agreed. And it's something that we need to look into. Okay. Um, are there any other questions on the budget presentation? I just had one. Yep. I just want to say, uh, I, I'm just Please echoing yeah. Adam. The, I, the, how much uh, 
th this presentation is is appreciated. Yes. Yeah, it it, it can't yeah. be under said honestly because we've never seen anything like this before. It's very thorough. It obviously leads to a fuller discussion, and um, and and really, um, Israel and Linda, you've done a great job. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I do want to echo one ca one area of caution. Um, as I've said, that this is going to be a conversation we are having throughout the next uh, two months. The board is considering a tax increase above the regulated 2%. I want that to be uh, abundantly clear um, and um, Oh, and everybody aware. So when we are considering, when we are having this conversation, um, I'm not going to say what the board will do, but what is the pre the presentation presented to us today does uh, articulate the option of going above the the regulated two percent cap. So I don't want anybody to be surprised um, if we do do that at the end. But we will do it with a clear um, area of needs and um, hopefully provide uh, great services to the students. Adam, if I could follow up on that and Darcy's point about maybe showing some activism with regard to state funding. I mean, I wonder if we could involve the community in some way, in some sort of activism. I mean, it would be great to sort of have community members energized about how we are trying to make this work and it is just impossible. It is just impossible. I mean, we can do what we can from here sure. and explain the situation we are in. Yeah. Um, but the primary goal uh, uh, that I, I'm going to take on in the next uh, two months with Linda and all of us together is to kind of articulate the budget that we have um, and to work with the, within the constraints that we are in, um, okay. while every time take a chance to slap the governor and uh, the, uh, the state for their lack of funding at that, at that point. But at, that, at this point, um, that, that's where my efforts are going to go. That sounds appropriate. Yeah. I hope the community will join us. And, and I, would be, I would more yeah. than welcome the community to join us to to do that, but um, at this point, I think we have articulated many a times that we are not even at our 2009, I believe, state funding levels. Yeah. Um, We're five million short. Something like that. Yeah. Over that. And the funding for the formula that is is not funded properly, and we, we've spoke about that many times on this table. But I think um, what we need to do is live in the constraints <laughs> that we are in. Oh sure, sure. And absolutely. And put our efforts to find to put to to put the uh, most uh, cost efficient and um, a respectful budget for the taxpayers together uh, that provides the most to the students. Absolutely. Yeah. I am, as someone who was new to the budget process yeah. last year, I at first did not realize, despite having come to a number of board meetings, how constrained we were by state funding. I didn't realize that we were not funded up to the formula, you know, till yeah. a number of months ago. Um, so I, I, I mean, I know you'll make that clear to yeah. people who come to board meetings and anything we can do to sort of make sure that the community as a whole is aware of that. Right. Um, that might help us sort of in terms of Linda can you pull the 10 year state aid numbers that I can so I can speak about them at the next board meeting mm -hmm. I, think oh, that's that, great. I think that's a good yeah, absolutely. Uh, indicator of, of where we are in trend and that would have made me feel better about the tax yeah. Yeah, if I had sort of yeah you know, so, uh, so can you pull the, actually the tax increases? Uh, so you know the, the spreadsheet that you normally pull for us, the 10-year, it's from the audit report actually. Uh, I think it's J3. But uh, um, uh, that uh, goes on the tax increases, the overall budget, uh, and the state aid numbers as well. I mean, it's just shocking. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it. I'll show yeah, you. It's very eye-opening. I, I have the audit report next to my bed right now. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it when I get home. And if, <laughs> if I can yeah. bring that up at the meeting on Wednesday when I meet with the um, communication committee. Or, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Um, can I throw one more in? Absolutely. Uh, it'll, it'll be two part. Uh, one, the boiler replacement. That is considered to be a, a critical replacement at this time. Absolutely. Okay. And then we, the. Yeah, we've been repairing that. And can we get a board tour of there the was board? Last year we were down to one boiler yeah. and we were praying that that one didn't break because it took us so long to get this one re uh, repaired. So it's, um, I think it's, it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very expensive. Um, but. Yeah, it's, they've gotten to the point where they're, the facility diminishing returns. <laughs> yeah, well, and they're very um, they're energy hogs too. So, in you know, once it's done, we'll, we will see an improvement in our utility costs. So that's right. one upside. You got a second part? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the other part is utilities are going to. We're not probably going to see a savings in our utilities for this this year. Our heating. No, I, we have a decrease right. of twenty one thousand. We're we're hoping for a further decrease in the heating costs. Um, once Even with the cold, extra cold winter. Oh, oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. Actually, the I'm, I'm talking about the natural shortfall. gas prices have dropped. 
That's good. So, um, okay. And last winter was cold, and I used last year's um, experience to uh, move forward right. and project this year and next year. Good. Um, so maybe we will. So, yeah. Perfect. Is there any other conversations on the uh, budget presentation? Israel, do you have anything else on the superintendent's report? No. Okay. Uh, Ms. McFadden and Dean Nicola, can we have the uh, curriculum and instruction report? Yes. <laughs> the curriculum committee met tonight, and um, the read-in, should I do that first? Okay. I'll just get that out of the way. Um, there was um, a revision necessary for an NJIT trip. Um, the chaperone um, needed to be replaced since uh, Ms. Maharana is no longer in the district. So um, there was also a change to the competition date. It's now February 11th. And now uh, we have Michael Moore replacing Ms. Maharana as the chaperone. The curriculum committee um, had a few updates. Um, there were some revisions. Minor changes were made to the social study standards that were adopted on July 9th. New skills were added to the skills table. Um, Highland Park curriculum documents will be reviewed and revised as necessary. Comprehensive health and physical education, minor changes were made um, that included uh, the following terms in the glossary overload principle, progressive principle, principle of specificity, health, wellness, rhythm, and health data. Um, newly passed legislation describing dating violence, education grades 7 to 12 was added to the legislation. That's NJSA 18A 35-4.23A. Um, Highland Park curriculum documents will be reviewed and revised as necessary. In technology, a new strand of computational thinking and programming was added to 8.2. Also, 8.1 educational technology must include instruction on social media for middle school students. Highland Park curriculum docu documents will be reviewed and revised as necessary. Uh, science, the next generation science standards, um, which are New Jersey state uh, curriculum standards, have been adopted. Um, New curriculum must be written for grades 6 to 12 and implemented by September 2016. Curriculum will also be needed to be written for grades K to 5 for implementation in September 2017. Professional development will be provided for teachers during the 15-16 school year to, provi to prepare for curriculum writing. World languages, minor changes were made to the grade level benchmarks and the annotated glossary and indicators. Highland Park curriculum documents will be reviewed and revised as necessary. Um, there is a change in the science department in the Highland Park High School. Um, this is a new course that is replacing an old course. So it was AP Physics B and now it will be AP Physics 2, um, which is the prerequisite is AP Physics 1. Mm -hmm. um, and professional development is being provided for that. Um, whoa, sorry, lots of papers. Um, this will require board approval. Um, this is from um, Elizabeth Pensinger. Um, and this is, well, how do I, I don't want to really read the whole thing, but um, this is a green status that we are looking to get. Um, it's an opportunity to partner with Rutgers and the EPA. So this is a read. This is a read-in. Right. Okay, so this was the motion um, number 14 that yep. we were putting forth. So yep. I'd like to make a motion to put this forth. Um, so this is an opportunity that we have. That's what I gave you. Can, it's the that, document in front of you. So yes. that's that's going to be 14. Yep. Right, thank you. Yep. There you go. So um, this was from the New Jersey Agricultural Experiment um, Station. And this involves um, a cooperative extension program with it's called Project Wades, Watershed Action, Dialogue, Education, and Stewardship. Um, and this project will, um, the teachers will help plan programming with uh, support of state and national content standards, join a network of like-minded teachers focused on improving their environment, gain access to resources for improving their classroom activities, share ideas with professionals in the environmental field, earn professional development credits. And um, the pilot project, which is being proposed tonight, is um, 
allowing the students to gain understanding for their local watershed, make a connection to their local stream, understand how stream community health is assessed, use techniques for collecting qualitative and quantitative data, plan solutions that reduce the impacts of human activities on the environment and biodiversity. So for the pilot project, our goal is to provide partner educators with two years of financial support through in-service learning opportunities for teachers, busing for school field trips, and provision of course materials and equipment and ongoing technical assistance. So it doesn't sound like there's anything bad about that. No. <laughs> um, there was one thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, I don't know if now's the right time, but new business. Okay, if we didn't talk about it in we'll curriculum, hold that till later. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's it for curriculum. Are there any comments? Um, it, yep. Am I, I'm losing my train all of a sudden. Um, the AP Music Theory course. That's a presumably a curriculum matter. Am I on the right heading here? Yep. I think it is. Yep. Sounds like curriculum. Um, I saw that the textbook, uh, the increased textbook price cost would be $4,620. Um, I'm just, out of, as a matter of curiosity, how many students do we have who are interested in that in that class? Do we have an, an S? I know we don't know exactly, but do we have a... An, this is... I mean, that, that's a lot of money. What's that? It is for next year, right? So it's for next year. It, uh, yeah. So we have a we have a threshold. If not, uh, if students don't sign up for it, we don't offer the course. So we don't buy the textbooks, presumably. Mm, We're gonna a, buy four thousand dollars. That's a harder question. Yeah. We will not buy uh, textbooks for a class of ten, let's say. Okay. So oh. th that's a conversation that we'll have with Mike Lasseter and the teacher to see how many kids actually signed up for that course. Okay. Once we ensure the number of kids, then we can proceed with purchasing the uh, the textbooks. Oh, I like that. Of that course, right. well, that's of sounds course, very rational. Uh, we got to be cost effective. Right. That's right. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, I, I'll be honest with you. That's not my yeah. highest priority in terms of our spending. An AP Music Theory course. I, I'm sure it's a wonderful course, and I know there are very talented students here and and all of that. Um, that wouldn't be where I would personally place our district's money, so I just want to make sure that $4,000 is, is well spent. Um, I saw that the the renamed music theory course, I don't know if that's what was previously music theory one or music theory two, it's now being called music tech, and that's uh, going to require another $3,900 worth of textbooks. I, I mean, I guess the same question. It's, I, it seems like a lot. But I realize that's not a very specific criticism. Well, I, I, I think... Um, I think one thing that we've always tried to do uh, in this district is create parity between our sports and our arts programs. When we invest in a sports program, we also invest in an arts program. Mm, I see. Um, and it just it seems like the last investment that we really made was about a fifty thousand uh, dollars investment into the music program, mm -hmm. um, and we have kind of not. Uh, enhanced our arts programs in the last three, four years, as mm. much as we have had great art programs, great plays. Um, so I would think that this would be a request from the uh, arts teacher, the music and arts teachers, but I mean, the concerns that you echo are the appropriate concerns about the class size and all of that, so. Um, so we'll hear more about it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think if the question is approving it or not approving it tonight, I think the board, I think the administration, will, if, even if the board approves it, won't purchase a textbook for six kids and it, or a class that's not being offered. Right, okay, wonderful. Thank yeah. you for that background. Yep. Yeah. Are there any other questions on the curriculum uh, report? Yeah, yep. Israel, I had reached out to you about my question about the, the field trip. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, right. And then the... In addition, the, the acceptance of the anonymous donation. Were you able to get any more information yeah, on that? In fact, uh, today, you know, in because of, of QSAC. QSAC and you know, all these other yeah, things. Just, you know, and just, just did not have enough time to actually um, uh, have that conversation with Wendy. Um, I can have it you know, first thing tomorrow morning. Right. And I'll get back to you tomorrow. Right. Is that, is that yeah, fair? I mean, I can, we have on the agenda again this time, uh, um, just so I can clarify for everyone, um, uh, we have on the agenda a field trip that would only be for the gifted and talented students. And actually, I was, in looking at the, the list of field trips, it seems like, you know, if we just had one additional column with a tiny bit more information to let us know what grades um, the field trip is for, because usually it just says, you know, high school or Bartle or Irving, but it doesn't necessarily tell us if that's the whole school or one grade or part of a grade or one class or that information would be helpful for the board to, um, you know, Which take a look at. 
which one? Um, so coming up? yes, it's um, it is coming up this week. Oh, was it yeah, this Friday? Week. The space trip, the oh, space center trip, the GNT program, plus eight additional students will be going on. Right, so. What's the eight additional? I, students? I, I believe there were sixteen. Now there are twenty-four. Right. I, I would we, be <laughs> curious to hear more about the lottery that took place. I believe to okay. pick the students and how that was handled. Yeah, it I mean, sounds like I, potentially a very difficult situation. I just continue to have concerns about multiple field trips for a very small select group of students when entire classes at Bartle haven't had any field trips at all this year, and I haven't heard of any on the horizon. Um, you know, I think if we're if we're accepting donations, if we're you know looking towards field trips, we should be looking towards things that um, that enrich all of our students, um, not just a select few. So I really, I, I question um, the acceptance of, of anonymous donations that benefit small groups of children. For me as well, I think the yeah. earmarking of funds for a, you know, a, a group of students kind of in a small district, I think that kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Okay. I encourage everybody to give us money. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Uh, for anything that they would like. Um, yeah, so. I think we need to be uh, a little more discerning. Right. I, I, I don't, I, dis I disagree. And okay. I, yeah, 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 I yeah. De but if we're not providing enrichment to entire grades, how do we justify multiple multiple field trips for a very small portion this is a, of children. This is a class that has a curriculum, and this is part of the curriculum for that class. It's a class right, that we, it's a so nice we class. have certain curriculums that are more enriching for some students it's than more, for it's the... It's not more or less enriching. It's part of the curriculum. I disagree. Okay. Uh, students being allowed to leave the building and... For an eight-hour trip? It, it sounds it's, fantastic. That's something that all of our students should be entitled to multiple times a year. And I've spoken with PTO representatives. They simply, simply can't keep up with the requests. I mean, this is where we get into funding. There isn't a lot of money left around for all of our students to go on field trips. The PTO can't keep up with the requests. I'm sure the Ed Foundation can't keep up with the requests. And we simply don't have the money. Mm -hmm. So if we're taking private donations that only impact 22 children, that makes me a little queasy. Okay. How many times has this happened? We've gotten a private donations for. That well, but it's a, this is, I'm just saying, is this the first, yeah. first time? First time. This, this, is, the this is the first time yeah. because the people prior are two trips were over fifty dollars a person. These trips so. are expensive. They're for small numbers of children. Right. I just wanted to be clear. Well, so I think Bartle, yeah, Bartle yeah. has that fifth grade trip that goes to Camp Bernie, right. and they are experiencing trouble coming up with the money to provide for all of the students to go to Camp Bernie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you ask me, it would be my personal preference to see all of the fifth graders go to Camp Bernie with that 500, rather than 22 children take a day trip. That would be my I, personal feeling. But I understand this is a really sticky argument. I think it's, argument. it's very that uncomfortable. the district is doing, you know, if it's something that the district did, then yes, you don't just limit to just a certain amount of children when you can engage like a larger group. But when, you, when it's a donation thing, that makes it, I think, a little yeah. bit. No, so it's the donation yeah. kind of came yeah. after. That's why I wanted to be sure that this was just the first one that was. Right. Yeah. As far as we know. I just want to highlight, and I'm sorry that I'm interrupting, as, as, as we have this conversation about being more equitable in the resources that we're providing for all of the students here at Highland Park, while we have GNT students that are provided with enrichment opportunities, I want everyone to know that we have increased the number of periods for enrichment for all of our students, particularly at Bartle and at Irving. Um, right now, through the collaboration of um, Kim Crane and um, Mr. Uh, uh, Anthony Benjamin and a, and a few other uh, teachers, we all got together and we created some common planning periods for the teachers in addition to uh, cross-curricular um, enrichment opportunities for the Bartle students and for the students at Irving. So, you know, true to our promise at the beginning of the year, we did expand that particular program. Um, should we have, can we have more trips um, for Bartle students? Absolutely. Um, we need to then explore more creative ways and really how to get that done. And, and that's a conversation that I'll have with Anthony Benjamin, the principal, and see what ways we can come up with where we can be more inclusive in allowing more students to go into trips. Yeah. I think um, it's creating a little bit of bad feeling at Bartle. There's a certain group of students that goes on field trips and you know has special time. And I, I know that this is inherent tension in any GNT program, yeah. um, but it's this particular format of GNT program is particularly difficult. 
So I think this brings up a greater conversation right. that we need to have. Um, I think um, if this is a particular concern for the board, um, we should ask the administration to pull together a presentation on the GNT program. Uh, not not until necessarily not right this second. Um, right. Take your time. There's <laughs> a lot to do. No, I mean I think we've already had a presentation on the GNT program yeah, very recently. I, I disagree that we need another presentation. I think we just need to specifically look at this field trip issue. It's come up well, multiple times now. There's been concerns expressed both with the parents in the program and parents outside the program that the the field trips seem excessive, and that we should be looking towards things that and, benefit all students. And, and I disagree. I think there is a greater concern beyond just the field trips in terms of identification. Uh, in terms of placement, um, yeah, I agree. and yeah. yeah, and I think we we no no feel free. Sorry, uh, <laughs> feel we, free to agree with me. <laughs> uh, uh, and um, and it seems like the presentation we had there were more there were more questions uh, brought out of that than necessarily answers. Um, and For we sure. we can we can extend that conversation to to the next level. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I right. think let's. Um, Let's talk about that, I guess, in new business. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Perfect. Then. So. Perfect. I will. I think uh, people at Bartle, and I'm sorry, I should yeah. have asked. It. No. It's okay. Uh, people at Bartle are pretty excited about the enrichment activities. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much for bringing that up. That. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that because there was a lot of sacrifices made uh, to bring that forth for the kids. Yeah, so well, thank you. It's, it's thank you. All people right. are very, very excited. I second that. See, you're doing something right. No. Uh, <laughs> plenty, plenty right. Uh, right. Uh, can we? Is there any other comments on the curriculum and uh, instruction report? Seeing no comments, can uh, uh, Aunt, uh, Catherine, uh, finance and facility report, please. Uh, the finance committee did meet tonight. Um, I'll bring your attention to a few items on the agenda. Item 12, um, the HP Municipal Alliance generously is donating funds again this year, $2,000 for the Sticker Shock program, uh, which re relating to underage drinking prevention. Um, item 14, uh, we uh, currently engage in cooperative purchasing with Hunterdon County ESC and Middlesex Regional. Um, educational data services is offering uh, a greater efficiency, so we're, we're going with them. Item 15, this relates to the uh, anonymous parent gift for the Bueller Space and Challenge Center field trip, and we're grateful for the donation, even though it is controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Item 16, um, the, the uh, Ed Foundation um, ex extended its grant for the field trip to the Liberty Science Center, and that also we are grateful for. And the Highland Park High School Orchestra received a Park Partners grant of $2,000 to try to fund their, um, their uh, field trip to Lincoln Center. And we got $22,000 with the Bridging the Device Gap grant um, uh, this was going to be used to purchase 70 Chromebooks and three power shuttles to support them. Um, so I love reading about grants that yes. come into the yeah. district. It's just really good news. Item 20 and 21 is about cabling um, to make the, the uh, copying and the printer use in the district more efficient. Um, there are also a couple of um, items. Uh, another bit of good news, the Bardo School Window Replacement Project is is pretty much done. The windows are in. It's just a finish work that needs to be done. Um, the parents of athletic teams received banners from On Point Printing at no cost, and that will be on next uh, next agenda. Um, the New Jersey Jersey Department. We didn't discuss this in the in the committee, but I'm going to read about it anyway. New Jersey Department of Agriculture. Oh yes, yes, it's good news. Um, so has selected Pylon Park to participate in the Direct Delivery Department of Defense Produce Program for next year. We will receive DOD produce delivered directly to the district. That's a, that is no. such a contradiction. I know. Terms. It's so the Department like of Defense is giving us. It sounds like vegetables. a 19, It sounds like a nineteen fifties. Like a nineteen fifties. <laughs> it does. Program. It does. It's like cheese. Okay. Are we getting it's blocks like, of cheese? Like, Spam. It's like post-war program. Go on. The, the important part is the is <laughs> the entitlement for the year will be forty one thousand two hundred seventy three dollars. $1, worth of fresh produce. So we're very excited about this one. That's going to save us some money. Um, uh, Linda will be soliciting proposals for a demographic study related to the long range yes. facilities plan so that we have an idea what with all the 
well, demographic shifts <laughs> and also the development in town um, to help us in determining um, our long range facilities plan. Okay, that does it. Any questions on the finance and facilities report? I just want to say how excited I am about the, demog the demography study. It's long overdue. It's going to really give us a lot of good insight onto the services we need to offer and um, what we're dealing with in terms of size of our district and potential ramifications from new developments and the size of our district and costs that we might have to incur to expand our buildings. Any other comments? Okay. Um, Jerry, can we have the personnel report, please? Yes, we've um, briefly met and discussed a maternity leave um, replacement and um, a couple of disability leaves, and that's it. Okay. And may we have the policy report, please? Could I ask a quick? Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I apologize. No, I, no, I apologize. I should ask. Question about personnel. I know yeah. Mr. Soto had talked, I, I believe, at our last public meeting about. Um, looking into alternative uh, ways of providing substitutes. And I'm, I'm, do we have an update on that, or is that just sort of still in its infancy? Still, is in its still in its infancy, OK. Thank you. Um, uh, I just want to let everyone know that this is actually, an, I, I know that we have been doing a lot of policies. What we have been doing, I'm not sure that the new board members are clear about this, what we have been doing is actually filling um, holes that were identified in our policy manual. But what we are also required to do every two years is to go through the entire manual. So oh, the way we do that. Please don't tell me we're up against that right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So the way, we but the way it. we do we that, it, 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 so we will do that in a different way than we've been um, <laughs> filling the holes. That what we stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it, it, it's part yeah. of the gig. I'm a little, I'm a little <laughs> slap happy about policies. Yeah. So what we will be doing is, um, I will let you all. Each committee has, um, and you already know this. Each committee has uh, sort of a set of the policies. You know, um, I think the one thousands are personnel um, mm -hmm. and. So so on. And so what you will prob what you need to do as a committee, and they're gonna do it in committee, um, although you will probably need to sort of Separate make meetings. a few outside uh, meetings because you won't be able to get it done um, during regular committee meetings because there's quite a lot of it, is you're just gonna go through all of the policies. And you, you don't have to go through them all word by word, but you know, you wanna take a look at the policies and then you sort of, the way that we would do it, um, always curriculum has the, the largest uh, sort of, you know, Excellent. crap. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you'll become policy making machines. Um, <laughs> You, you sort of go through and, you know, take notes and, you know, you can, I mean, a lot of the policies are going to move through the committee unchanged. Mm -hmm. um, and they have all been, um, they have all been reviewed as recently as last Plus year, because <laughs> um, we, we didn't, we didn't completely finish in the, in, in the year that we were given, but, um, but this is, this is what has to happen this year. So. Um, I will uh, perhaps prepare for the next meeting um, the the list of policies that each committee has to address. What's our end oh, date? No. Uh, well, Susan is actually. Poor Susan. Uh, uh, preparing Sorry, Susan. Susan, I just. S Susan, that. hold on, guys, calm Susan, down. Can you focus guys, on me? Guys, stop. <laughs> Sorry. Susan has prepared um, a, a, the, the old school binders for all of us uh, with every single policy that we have approved over the last year. They are going to be uh, couriered over to everybody's home. So we don't we don't want the ones we've approved in the last year. We so want it's going to be everything. everything. It's the full. It's okay. the so it's the full. It is the full. Wow. It is the full. Do, it is the full policy, policy book. We're each going to have our own binder Correct. that we can bring to. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Jerry's like, yeah, no, yeah. thanks. Well, you know, it makes two. more sense for right. her to sort of divide it up and just give into because otherwise well, each committee right. give each committee so theirs. Everybody will have uh, guys. Everybody will have a policy manual that they can reference at their home. You can take out whatever sections you want from it, um, but I. Saw the binders. I, I think Adam, I, I think I disagree too. Uh, that seems it's already wasteful. done. It's already done. It seems wasteful it's already done to it, me. It's, it's already done. done. It, it's already it's done. It's online. I understand okay. all. I understand all that. Um, it's something that the administration thought would be useful, and I actually agree. I have my old school binder at home, and it's sometimes just good to look at. Uh, they will be updated and changed as needed, but it will. Ha you'll, each person individually will have at their own home a. Uh, 
policy manual that is all the same font and um, all the same policies that we have updated, or every policy that we have. Yeah, not the, just the ones we've updated, because no, actually that's, that's, a, that's a completely separate issue. So I think that- it, She's um, gonna add once, these tonight. Once we finish these, we will have addressed the holes that were identified in our policy manual, yep. and now we have to then- um, yep. And you also actually have the regulations in that as well. So you'll have policy and regulation, so it's two binders. <laughs> beach reading. Yeah, beach reading. Binders full of Okay, policy. well, that was the policy report. Yeah. <laughs> so are we, uh, does that mean we're tabling all the ones that were on for tonight so that, no. no. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, do we? These are actually on second. Uh, yeah. Oh, so on second. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, there aren't any for first. Gotcha. And so the one, the one that we want to discuss, I think, with, with in some detail is, um, is the one that you've raised, um, uh, that you have provided us uh, material on. So I think the rest, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I, I have a total procedural um, question. Did we, uh, to my, the best of my knowledge, at our first January meeting, we didn't appoint a policy committee? Did well, we? the policy committee is appointed by, uh, Anne is the chair of the policy committee, and then each committee, so you never appoint the policy committee at the first meeting because each committee is responsible for appointing one of their members to sit on the uh, okay. policy committee. Okay, so, but we haven't done that. Um, each committee has to have that discussion if they have not had it already. But we weren't um, told but to do that. the policy committee is not actually. Um, a standing committee. This is not, yeah, it's a standing committee, but it's not required. No, it's not, for it is not a standing committee. I thought it was a standing no. committee. No, no. it is not. Okay. Well, in any case, it isn't required in for this because the, the policy review actually takes place in committee. Right, but so are we saying we're not going to have a policy no, committee No, we are, you have to. Each okay, but you didn't tell us that. I, I mean, did, you didn't I, ask the committees to do that. I think that's not true, and it's, I'm telling you now, it's, there's no need for it right this second, but I'm asking you right now, the chairs of the committee by the next meeting should have the, you guys should discuss it in meeting, in, in committee, and pick one representative from each uh, committee to sit on the policy committee. And uh, have that by the next meeting? Or? Yeah, I, okay. I just said that. Um, and also, um, the one other thing just to add, the policy committee does have one responsibility in the policy review, it is the bylaw section of it. So that, at some point, they will have to sit and do. Um, is there any comments on the policy uh, uh, report? <coughs> Well, the, the policies for second reading, I'm a little embarrassed. I should have probably gone through that policy and redlined it with my suggestions so that we can have a basis for discussion um, rather than just presenting a bunch of materials. Can you just say which, it's the, I oh, know I'm it's, sorry, it's the it's, restraint. It's, yeah, it's yeah. number um, five, 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 six, five, one. Five, yeah, 5561. Five, um, I mean, would it be appropriate to table it or? Is, we can table it if you would like yeah. and, and, and discuss it next time, sure. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. I'm sorry that I was not. No um, problem. It's 5561, five, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other comments? Okay. Seeing as there's no comments, I'm going to move to public comment. Uh, the Highland Park Board of Education welcomes public comment, uh, public participation, and reserves this time for your comments. Uh, please sign in uh, and state your name and address uh, for the record, please. Kimberly Bevilacqua Crane speaking as president of HPEA. Well, I've certainly got a lot to say. Um, first, I'd like to do a recap of um, the last time that I was up here speaking about a month ago. We wanted to report on some progress. With um, We had a situation with the business office and our retro checks. The communication has greatly improved between the association and the business office. Ms. Huffla has reached out to us several times um, to discuss and uh, come up with a plan for issues that were appropriate to discuss with the association, and we appreciate that change. So we feel that that issue is making progress. Thank you, Ms. Hafla. And thank you um, to Israel, too, for facilitating that change and um, explaining a lot of the procedural issues that came that uh, allowed that occurrence with our retro checks to occur. I have some comments on policy. This down. Policy number 3282 and 4282. These are the policies on social networking sites for both teaching staff members and support staff members. 
Um, we have an issue with item seven on page two of either one of those policies. They're both pretty much written the same. Item seven and item eight, it states that um, they are, that teachers would be, or staff mem support staff members would be prohibited from using their school district title as well as adding references to correspondence, blogging sites, and it goes on uh, to talk about unless communication is of an official nature, prohibits signature lines and personal email accounts. This is a problem for us because we're proud of what we do and we would like to state that we are from the district. It, there, there are clear lines that are drawn between the opinions of staff. There are many policies, many laws, many situations where educators are taken to task and held accountable for their comments. And we educate our members as best we can as to where those lines are. To put in a policy that we're not, that we're in some sort of violation of, of this policy or anything else to state that we are a member of the district is concerning to us because we're proud of where we work and we want people to know where we work and we're well aware of the things that we can and cannot say. Number eight, shall not post updates to their status on any social networking sites during normal working hours including posting of statements or comments on the social net networking sites or of others during school time unless it involves a school project. Employees must seek approval from superintendent. This, um, I had a conversation with the board president about this there are situations, social media is now a part of our life. This policy, while we're certainly not opposed to that applying to times when teachers and um, staff are supposed to be working during lunchtime, we would like that clarified. It's absolutely necessary during lunchtime at times to communicate with our relatives, and I will illustrate a personal example. I had a relative recently with a very ill nephew, and the only way that we were communicating was Facebook because she was in the hospital with her kids and I didn't want to call. And that's how, where she receives support from her family because you can't make phone calls when you're in the hospital. That was essential. Was I doing that while I was teaching? Absolutely not. Was I doing it on my lunch break? Yeah, because that was how I was connecting to my family. And it's, at this point, you know, you're not going to restrict educators from making a phone call to their family during lunch. Social media has become the same way of communicating. The rest of the policy, we didn't have... Um, Really, you know, most of these policies are things that are already outlined, um, and it's actually kind of shocking that out of all of the policies that, there, that there's only a few things that we're taking issue with at this point, and it's mostly wording. The next policy is policy 4281, inappropriate staff conduct. The um, fourth paragraph down, explains that uh, school staff's conduct in completing their professional responsibilities shall be appropriate at all times, and then goes on to talk about appropriate conduct, uh, staff shall not seek or engage people who are present. Lots of things that are, again, already known. I'm not sure that we need a policy to illustrate, once again, the responsibility of teachers. And this is also on the back of this policy. The second page um, talks about DIFUS and responsibility of personnel to uh, report things if they see colleagues engaging in this type of behavior. All of this is, is encompassed in DIFUS law, and I'm not sure why we have a policy on inappropriate staff conduct that is also, you know, makes references to the New Jersey Department of Children and Families. So you may want to consider making that two policies instead of having that uh, under an inappropriate staff conduct clause. Moving on to the, oh, uh, before I forget, I would like to invite the Board of Education to our Take the Park event on Thursday um, in the high school cafeteria. We have rented the cafeteria from the Board of Education, so we are paying for the use of the facility. We will have been inviting community legislators, parents, staff, of course the board, and our administrators to this event. This event is to outline the procedures of PARC, to educate parents from an, from an educator's perspective on how this test is taken, as well as um, the controversies swirling around the test. And this will be presented, as I said, from an educator's view. So you are welcome to come. You can take the test. Um, you can hear the commentary from speakers that we will be having across the state come and talk about um, 
you know, the, the levels, uh, the difficulty, and many of the other concerns around this test. We will have lots of materials available for people. Um, and we'll be having a spirited discussion about opt-out, about policies. We are not, well, we are not encouraging people to opt out. It's definitely a topic of discussion. And it's a topic that the association is broaching because there have been many, many questions um, of our educators. And we feel that it's more appropriate to address this in a forum instead of having people go to our individual members and have comments given that way. There were many comments made during the board, uh, the presentation to the board on budget this evening that are concerning to the association. Um, while it was a well put together presentation, the suggestion that we would outsource paraprofessionals is incredibly unacceptable. And I, I, I can't even believe that we're talking about this. We, you know, I have to tell you, we're looking at bringing our custodians back into our unit because we've had reports recently of ill treatment to our custodians. And while that's not our jurisdiction right now, that's something that you know, we were hoping to have a conversation of. So to hear that we would even entertain a conversation about outsourcing our paraprofessionals was shocking, absolutely shocking. And we were absolutely blindsided by that statement. Um, as well as the kindergarten paras, thank you to Michelle for outlining what it would be like in a classroom. Our kindergarten paras are essential. These para paraprofessionals, there were many things on the paraprofessional um, discussion that were concerning to us, particularly, you know, the number, talking about the number of paras, we, we just also heard in juxtaposition that we're talking about bringing special needs kids back into the district. You're going to need paras for the special needs kids. If you're looking at consolidating classrooms in every level, including kindergarten, you're going to need Paris to support those children in those classrooms. And while we appreciate that there are budget constraints and that there are things that absolutely need to be looked at, and we are absolutely in support of placing the right professional with the right child, with the right student to help, we are absolutely opposed to and and will fight with every fiber of our being the outsourcing of our paraprofessionals. Trenton j recently um, was in the news for laying off, I think, 140 people. There were 50 C around 50 CST members. They're, we're not Trenton. We're not Trenton. We don't want to go down that road. We don't. We don't have any reason to have this this kind of uh, other than you know. I understand it was presented just as something that you're looking at, but I'm, I can't even tell you the phone calls that I'm going to get tomorrow from people that are afraid for their jobs. And this is where we were last year. This is, this is not the second chapter. This is not the second chapter of, you know, I'm looking forward to putting out another article on how, how great Highland Park is doing. And we're doing wonderful things. We really are. We stick to that. But this, this type of conversation looked at, you know, projective, whatever, is slowing down that process of the second chapter. I'd also like to talk about, um, you know, paying for subs. Um, we, are, we are hiring. We, I, there were many points in the budget con conversation that we have questions about, and I think it would probably be more appropriate for the association to sit down with Mr. Soto and talk about these than to, rather than to outline all of them here, because I've made lots of notes. Mm -hmm. um, the sixth period is certainly something that we have been having discussions with. That was something we were prepared for. We would like to assure our membership that, as Mr. Soto stated here tonight, that anything that was looked at with, this, with the sixth period would be contractual. Um, it would not mean extra work for teachers. It may mean a cost savings because people are simply not teaching extra work. And if you're not teaching extra work, you're not paid for extra work, and there's your cost savings. And maybe you hire two more staff members to fill in the gap, so you're spending a little to save a lot. Um, that is a conversation that, as Mr. Soto said, that we will continue ha to have with the building principals and him and further the discussion with our staff. And we understand that everything needs to be presented. However, it, it really, the para conversation was a shock. Um, the $70,000 for landscaping, um, maybe we stopped trimming the bushes. <laughs> that was, that's a huge increase. Um, the it's 100 not. and, what? Nothing. Okay. Go ahead. 
the 135 plus uh, 135,000 plus 104,000 um, that was indicated that was being co uh, that our kindergarten paras were costing us. Um, I'm not sure where those numbers came from, and again, Mr. Soto and I will have a conversation about that. I'm not sure if that was because we happen to have in our kindergarten classroom some of our most experienced paras because they are needed there and because they've been working with, uh, with earlier education for a long time and because their salaries are higher since they have been here for so long. So I'm interested to see where those numbers came from. And I'm also interested to see where the $357 in negotiated contract increases came from because we just went through those numbers. So I'm interested to see how those figures break down as well. And I would like to end with the fact that absolutely the health insurance premiums are killing us. We will be, uh, they're killing the board, they're killing us because we will be moving on to our contributions. Um, we will be now in the, as required by the state, uh, we will be moving on to the third tier, which is a much higher contribution in September. So we are absolutely paying into this much more than we have. In fact, we have members on our salary guide right now at the top of the guide that will be in September, or if they are not already, making less than they were three years or four years ago, taking actually taking home less in their paychecks. So they are killing everyone with, with the health insurance costs and um, NJEA is actually working on a plan right now with legislator, legislature to uh, address some of those issues and you can look forward to an update from that to um, you know, something in the future we're working on uh, different options for health care. And we look forward to the conversations with Mr. Soto um, hopefully sometime this week on clarifying some of the budget numbers. I will be sending out a memo tonight to our staff, uh, just so nobody, no one is concerned about their jobs and outlining what we will be doing about the budget. It's a pretty bleak perspective for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Good evening. Am I there? Good evening. I'm used to my teacher voice. This is awkward. <laughs> um, good evening. My name is Kaya Schlesinger, and I am a parent of a seventh grade student. I'm here with another Highland Park parent, Anna Perez Vinas, to express our concerns about the lack of a bilingual parent advisory committee in the Highland Park public schools. I'm a new parent to the Highland Park School District. This past August, I re registered my stepdaughter, who is bilingual in French and English. I have since joined the Highland Park Parents of Students of Color Bilingual Bilingualism and Diversity Committee, where I learned that the district doesn't have a bilingual parent advisory committee established. According to the NJ State Bilingual Code, and I quote, each district board of education shall provide for the maximum practical involvement of parents of LEP students in the development and review of program objectives and dissemination of information to and from the district boards of education and communities served by bilingual ESL or English language services education programs. Each district board of education implementing a bilingual education program or any district providing a bilingual alternative through a waiver shall establish a parent advisory committee on bilingual education of which the majority mem membership shall be parents of LEP students. In addition, the U.S. Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division and the U.S. Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights recently published joint guidance to school districts reminding them of their legal, legal obligations to protect the rights of English learners. We are here asking you, the Board of Education and the Superintendent, to establish a bilingual parent advisory committee as soon as possible in order to not only meet legal obligations, but to inform and engage families of English lear learners in our town. Can I ask a question? Or, Anne, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to, move, we're gonna have to wait to new business. We're gonna I, I can, can I ask a clarifying question? About like what, where this document is that she's referring to? Or, no, okay. We, we're, Apologies. yeah, no, it's, we're, public comment is for the public and we're gonna, uh, we're, th for this time we're gonna do all board comments during uh, new business. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry. Nope, thank you. 
Okay, I'm Anna Pere, 344 Becker Street, and I'm aware of all the initiatives in this district uh, concerning English learners, including uh, recently the uh, Broad Goose Conversation Cafe uh, for uh, adult English learners, um, parents of uh, English learner students, and also the after school ESL um, program, uh, which is wonderful. Um, in the spirit of inclusion and um, and uh, equity that is outlined in your policy on um, Title I district-wide uh, parent, parent involvement. Um, it's page 13 of the policy booklet. I was very happy to read about that policy, and I hope uh, I have a chance to, uh, to learn more about it. Um, I will just read what Kaya said in Spanish. Uh, I'm sorry for taking your time, but That's I right. think symbolically it's a little just a, a little gesture towards our uh, Latino community. And if I knew um, Mandarin, I would translate it <laughs> Mandarin too, but I can't. Buenas noches, me llamo Ana Pairet y soy madre de un alumno de cuarto grado. Estoy aquí con otra madre, Kaya Schlesinger, para expresar nuestra preocupación sobre la ausencia de una comisión consultativa de familias bilingües en las escuelas públicas de Highland Park. La familia de Kaya acaba de integrarse al distrito de Highland Park. En agosto pasado, registró a su hijastra, que es una alumna bilingüe francés e inglés. Desde entonces, ha participado, como yo misma, en un comité sobre bilingüismo y diversidad organizado por el grupo Familias de Estudiantes de Color de Highland Park, donde se enteró que nuestro distrito no tiene establecido una comisión consultativa de familia bilingüe, según establece el Código del Estado de New Jersey. I'll just read an excerpt in translation of what you just heard. Cada distrito de uh, Consejo de Educación que implementa un programa de educación bilingüe o cualquier distrito que uh, administra una alternativa bilingüe a través de una dispensación debe establecer un comité, um, un comité consultativo uh, sobre bilingüe educación bilingüe en la cual la mayoría de los miembros deben ser padres de estudiantes con competencia limitada en inglés. Por otra parte, la División de Derechos Civiles del Departamento de Justicia de los Estados Unidos y la Oficina de Derechos Civiles del Departamento de Educación publicaron este mes de enero unas directivas conjuntas para los distritos escolares recordándole su obligación legal de proteger los derechos de los aprendices de inglés, English Learners. Hoy pedimos por consiguiente al Consejo de Educación y al señor superintendente que se establezca lo antes posible una comisión consultativa de familias bilingües, no solo para cumplir con obligaciones legales, pero también para informar y comunicar con las familias de los alumnos que están aprendiendo inglés en nuestra comunidad. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you uh, uh, for communicating to the board and to me uh, the need to establish a bilingual advisory committee and we're going to look into it and, uh, and we're going to move very quickly in doing this and I'll be getting in contact with you. Yeah. And for uh, our Latino community, yo también hablo español y quiero que sepan que yo también soy bien sensitivo para eh, la necesidad de la comunidad hispana y siendo hispano quiero ser su representante por poder contar conmigo. Gracias. And if you don't mind uh, passing on the letters to the board, uh, board members would like to see the information in them. For either, either, either or, whatever is easier. You signed. You signed in, correct? Both of you. Did you sign in? Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to pass this? Give it to Linda, and she'll give it to the board. So scan it and send it to the board. Yeah. I think yeah. we did get it. Yeah. yeah. My name is. Oh, I hate these things. My name is Oscar Marina, 217 Harper Street. So, two things. First, I'm going to talk about the process of how we finalized on the mascot, so you guys were all on the same page and aware. The other thing is, um, you did mention, Michelle, about Camp Bernie and how it's running. Camp Bernie has been funded by the 
Ed Foundation for years and will continue to do so. Half funded. Half funded? Okay. That's what I text. I wasn't sure, but if we could fund it fully, then that's something we need to discuss in the future with the Ed Foundation. Um, concerning the mascots, um, it started actually last year. We were discussing about the website, and I asked Chris for the actual artwork of the mascots. Nobody knew where they were. No. Nobody knew where they came from. We just had them on the website, and then to further research, you'll notice they did not match what we had in the buildings. They did not match what we had on t-shirts. They did not match on anything that we owned or had. And if I knew that was gonna open up Pandora's box, I would have left it closed. So from that research, we found out that the, for example, Irving Dragon, there's two versions of it. Um, the first one is a drawing that's hanging on the wall in the office of Irving. And the one that's on the website was pulled off of Google. Both of them we do not own because we don't really, originally the one on the wall in Irving was drawn by a parent about at the beginning of when Irving was built and formed. So we have no idea of where the original artwork is. That's the only thing of the dragon. Um, same with Bartle. No idea where the dolphin came from. We have more than one dolphin. Middle school doesn't have a mascot. Never has had one. They have been borrowing the high school mascot. High school mascot, we have about four or five different versions of an owl. They're not consistent. We have to the point where the schools are now, the students on their t-shirts are actually drawing their own owls. So due to the fact that we had, known, we had no consistency of mascots, we did not own the artwork, we did not have any artwork, we were not able to reproduce, we were not able to move forward with a website, um, and this led us to starting to work on creating a consistently see look and a mascot and having making sure we can own them. Because by not owning the mascot and copyright laws, we are not allowed to sell any of the t-shirts. So that is actually because we, we, it's a profit. You can own a piece of art, and, but as soon as you sell it, that's when you can get into trouble. Now, do I think we'll technically get into trouble? No, I do not, but why leave that road open and have the possibility that it can be. Mm -hmm. um, so we started drawing the mascots and with the administrative Mr. Soto, he was very determined that he wanted input from the staff members and the principals. We started talking to the principals, we started talking to staff members, the principals would show all the mascots to the staff members. Um, we got input back from Irving, especially Irving. Some of the staff were very attached to certain looks of mascots. They were attached to the, um, the, the dragon that was in the office. We incorporated a little bit of everything because we also understood, especially I would understand, that the kids are very used to seeing a purple dragon. So that's why we kept a consistency, but we, kept, but we changed some of it. Made it a little bit of our own, and it was approved by them made older staff and younger staff happy because we combined all pieces together. Same thing with Bartle. Reached out, got some feedback, they came back to us, we didn't like this, we want this changed. M middle school, because they had no mascot, they were just happy with what they got. Um, <laughs> and I purposely tried to create a mascot that would have a little bit of an attitude, you know, like the younger brother who is just, you know, pain in the ass. Changing to the high school. The high school was, I know, it was a slip. The high school um, got a lot more involvement. The high school, there was a, a variety of owls. The one that the students are very passionate about is the owl that's painted on the wall, right as you walk in. We tried our best, I really tried my best to incorporate that into a digital file. It's almost impossible to do so. Talk to the student, see if she wanted to redraw it on the computer. She said she didn't want to. This was something that was voted by the student government, that they wanted this owl incorporated somehow. So this is where we got the idea of redoing a mascot with the wings open. Also because I thought it would look really cool on a football helmet <laughs> to have the wings. Concerning the H and the P, that is very easy to drop off, put on, put off. I but I think the most important thing is that the school, the principals, the staff members, and the students 
really like the mascots that they have. And we are in a position right now that the school needs to own and brand and have a look. And it has to be consistent. And that was one of the reasons why we have a baby owl growing to be the full owl. Mm -hmm. And the idea of having the wings open is the idea you're in high school, you're growing, you're, going, you're, you're flying out into the world when you graduate. Um, we also needed, going into the 21st century, social networking, publications, everything, we needed it vector art, we needed it computerized. Um, so, for example, we cannot move forward with our new website without having these mascots done okay. and moving forward. But the, the point of it is I wanted to explain to you, this was a decision that was very involved, uh, involved principal, staff, and especially high school students. At one point, we were thinking of having doing three, having the students actually draw and then having the students vote. Mr. Soto was very nervous that that would not be fair because then you're putting the students voting against their own peers. Mm -hmm. So that was scratched off the table. A lot of thought went into how to approach this without giving a new look, but without knowing where it came from. So, just so you have an idea, I wasn't done very, you know, no thought behind that was, that was actually, that was a very good clarification and good insight onto where, how this came, came, came to fruition. It's been many, many months, and the high school was- Got it. Was we can't, we, you know, I'm, all right, thank you, thank you, and thank you for all your work. I appreciate it, and the board appreciates it as well. Do you want to? Yeah, I, I, before we begin with the next speaker, um, thank you, Saskia, for that point of clarification. But I would also like to clarify a comment um, for Kim Crane. Um, the presentation that we did today in terms of the budget, by no means, we're looking at eliminating Paris. The, it was a point of clarification how much of Paris, it's a breakdown, right, of cost. We have 50 Paris, this is how much it's costing us. Um, we're looking at, so I don't want the message to be relayed back to the Paris that uh, they're in danger of losing their jobs. Um, that was the intent. When we discussed the six Paris that are in kindergarten, it was a point of information. Um, I'm not suggesting to eliminate Paris in kindergarten. It's a point of information. If the board would decide to do such, they would be redeployed somewhere else. So in no, th there, was, there was no point of the presentation indicating and suggesting that a Paris will be eliminated. What we are looking at is, if we have 50 Paris that we're paying for, we want to make sure that we have all of the uh, efficiencies in place because we need all 50 Paris. It makes no sense for us to have 50 Paris when we truly only need 40. Correct. But if we need all 50, when it is what it is, right? Like they all say. So I just wanted to make a point of, uh, you know, clarify that uh, for Kim Crane and uh, all of the Paris in this district. Okay. I just Thank you, Israel. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, I'm uh, Daryl Voorhees, uh, 300 Donaldson Street, Holland Park. Um, I have a uh, second grader, eight, year, eight years old. Um, just started borrow this year. He's having a great time in school, uh, enjoys it. He doesn't struggle with um, some of the um, you know, uh, focused issues that some people might have, um, usually. Uh, he's also very active. Um, we actually put a Fitbit on him in the beginning of the year for curiosity. And uh, we were blown away, uh, 18,000 steps. And we sampled it a few times, just to be sure. It was 18,000 steps, over four miles. Um, so that's a, a typical day at the beginning of the year, and uh, that was great. Um, he's been coming home, you know, you get home in the winter, it's a little bit darker. Uh, maybe you know, it's colder out. I understand that you don't go outside. Um, uh, but uh, it definitely was something else at home. He was, it, it, it was a whole other level of uh, something else going on. So we talked to him and he, uh, he, he went over uh, a change that was going on um, with uh, recess, which he didn't really want to call recess. Um, you know, it was 
no longer running around the gym. Uh, apparently, I guess, with the new schedule, which I guess was implemented uh, December, uh, I forget exactly when. January. Um, January. Um, they're going back into the classrooms. And it's more board games, uh, sitting, um, that sort of thing. He's not getting. We haven't done the Fitbit again, but I can guarantee it's nowhere near the 18,000 steps. And uh, it's showing at home. And I'm sure if it's showing at home, the same thing is happening at school. And um, you know, there's no shortage of uh, studies that show that it does affect performance academically. They're not getting their exercise in. Um, and it's also mandated for uh, what uh, yeah, two and a half hours. 150 minutes uh, a week, and uh, if they're doing this thing um, in school, I mean, class recess, they're certainly not getting that. So, um, I guess the new schedule created this this thing. So, if there's any way to re look at that and maybe uh, change course, <coughs> that would be great. Was, uh, yeah. I noticed it, and uh, it created a change. Thank you. Israel, do you want to address that? Yes, very quickly, let me address it. I want to thank you so much for uh, uh, highlighting that. And this is a, a situation that, that has been brought to my attention, and, and it grieves my heart. Trust me, it, it really does. Uh, but th this is the trade-off. Uh, we had a situation in this district where kids that were participating in uh, physical education classes, uh, we had an inordinate number of students in one particular gym class. And we needed to break up that class because because it was, quite frankly, it was very, very dangerous. Um, this was a conversation that, uh, and a concern that was addressed um, early on, early, you know, September, October. Uh, we did promise the community that we were going to do whatever is necessary to reduce class size in gym, because the gym teachers were very concerned about the number of kids. That's number one. Number two, we wanted to address the situation that uh, we wanted to be more equitable in the number of periods uh, of, of um, of uh, enrichment activities provided for more, more, more students. Uh, and we also wanted to provide teachers with the opportunity for common planning. Not common preps less like, like last year, but actually common planning. So what was the trade-off? So now we don't have enough uh, we don't have the facilities and or the people uh, to take the kids out, particularly in the winter time. Uh, um, therefore, uh, they've been engaged um, in the classrooms doing classroom activities. I can assure you that uh, springtime, or as soon as it gets a little warmer, the kids will be back outside. Um, we're going to take a second look at it. Um, it's not going to happen this year. Um, we're not going to change the schedule, but certainly I'll have conversations with the principals, uh, taking that into consideration for next year as they prepare a new schedule for next year where we can have opportunities for the kids to go outside, where we can still keep the physical education classes, reduce class size, we can maintain the enrichment programs for the kids and have that common planning. So um, just, just bear with us. I, mean, I can certainly understand your perspective. Thank you. Uh, Virginia Lofton, 303 South 2nd Avenue. I have two comments. One is about the branding of the um, mascots. A few years ago, I visited a town, I think it was, um, I, I don't know what it was, Ridgefield, Ridge, someplace up north, and every single store had the school, um, some sort of school banner. They were hanging from the post. The, the entire town was wrapped up in the school. And I thought it was great, and I tried to talk about it here when I was on the PTO, and there wasn't much interest at Bartle. So maybe, you know, if you get the town involved, and I see that we have the owls out, but, but getting stores to post things, it's, it was really great to see that town. Um, my other question is about the budget. Uh, mm -hmm. You said that we're having a an increase in, in cost for technology upgrades. Um, like a lot of parents, I'm concerned about park, and I'd like to know what percentage of that cost this year um, is related to park and last year how much was related to park in in the case of uh, the hardware uh, that we have purchased it, it was a win-win we needed the, the the hardware for park but um, you know for those of us that are instructional leaders um, we go beyond park these were uh, hardware that the kids actually needed for instruction 
And so I don't view things just as park. I view as how can, uh, park is too, you know, a few days. And what are we gonna do to support uh, instruction for children, particularly using uh, hardware um, during the entire year? So our focus was really uh, focused on, you know, using it as an instructional tool because um, in the long run, that's, that's what they're gonna be using the most. Um, so for us, it was a, a, a double win. We took care of the park situation and we took care of using it as an instructional tool. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say park is two days? No, no, it's very yes, because you do, you have two parts of park. Yeah. You know, yeah, right. so no, no, like yeah, two parts. Okay. All right, but, but we, we want to use uh, the, 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 um, the laptops as, as an instructional tool rather than just focusing on park. Um, unfortunately, because of the mandates of park, we need those, those um, you know, laptops. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Allison Salerno. I live on Grant Avenue. I have a couple of different things, brief things to say. First of all, Mr. Soto, I really appreciate the budget presentation. I understand it's just the beginning, but I thought it was really clear and gave us something kind of to think about, to chew on. I really appreciate that. And I, I, I knew and I can see, continue it, how many, how much pressure you guys are under the whole board and trying to, there's just, you have a lot on your plate and a lot of challenges. Um, I also wanted to um, say that, Mr. Soto, what you said about the, um, I was happy to hear that you have had, professionally had experience with successful collaborative classrooms. Um, as someone who works in special ed as a teacher, um, to me, and, and I'm not saying you disagree, but from my perspective, the most important thing is to give both the general ed teacher and the special ed teacher proper professional training. I can't, I've, I've only worked as a special ed teacher for five years and I can't tell you how many hours and hours I've been in co-teaching workshops and, and had coaching from the child study team and, and so forth. And when our child was in the district, I, I did not, as a special ed student, I did not get the impression that was happening here. And so I, I would hate for you to throw the baby out with the bathwater and just not go with the co-teaching model or the collaborative model, but I think you know, we really need to support the teachers and train them. Um, it's not part of education school, a teacher school at all that I've seen um, from folks who come out of a general ed background and even a special ed background. Anyway, the other thing is, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to clean a 17-year-old's bedroom, but I did that after my son graduated from Highland Park High School. He was in Spain. I really don't go into his room much for lots of different reasons <laughs> involving food and just, it's gross. But I was like, he's away, I'm gonna go in his room. And I probably found, now this is after he walked across the stage and got his diploma, probably about $1,000 worth of textbooks from his, all his years in Highland Park High School. Um, Can we have I, them back? Uh, so I do take some responsibility for the textbook <laughs> loss, okay? Did you return them though? I did, and what, what happened then was actually quite disappointing, and as a taxpayer, I was horrified. And um, there were also like library books from the, the um, school library. And um, so I drove over with my bundle to the high school uh, it was really a heavy, I mean, seriously, because I know those textbooks are like 175 bucks. Yeah, yeah. I'm serious, about $1,000 worth of books. I went to the main office, it was summer, and I said, you know, I have textbooks from my son. They said, just put them in that pile over there. They never asked my name, we never got a bill, and it was just literally in a pile. And as a tax, well, there's lots of reasons that upset me. Yeah. We're not teaching our kids, including my kid, uh, personal responsibility for his materials. Um, there's also the budgetary issue. Um, you know those textbooks are really expensive. The other incident that happened that same school year, now this is not this school year, this is last school year. My other son was a freshman in a uh, college prep class. And he came home and he said, we're getting extra credit from the teacher if we bring in our own To Kill a Mockingbird book. And I was like, what's the problem? And he said, well, they ran out of books. 
And I really had a philosophic problem with, you know, because some, I have easy access, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I could easily buy the whole class books, and I would, I offered to actually. I called the teacher and I'm like, can I help you with something because this doesn't make sense? And she said, well, the policy is, you know, the kids lose the books and, and just the way the high school was being run. And I had eventually ended up to the principal who said it was from the superintendent. So um, basically the kids were not being held responsible for lost books. And I said, I, will, I do not feel comfortable. I talked to the, the then principal, just from a philosophic standpoint, offering some kids whose parents go to Barnes and Noble or can get on Amazon.com, my kids shouldn't be getting extra credit when, you know, like that's not comfortable to me. Mm -hmm. And he, um, it was the former principal, he said, um, we'll take care of it. Like something happened where they all got their Tickle Mockingbird books. But um, he indicated it was a policy of two superintendents ago that, um, and I don't know, you yeah. know, I don't know, I just know what I encountered as a parent last year. Now I'm hopeful that, I'm, I can't imagine you think that's a good policy. And um, he said, um, I cannot remember his name, but this gentleman, two principals ago at the high school said, he had kids regularly walking on graduation owing 300, 400, 1,000 with my kid, I'm sure. So it's just something, like moving forward, as we Absolutely. say, we just need to take a look at this. We, there, we need to teach our kids, including my own children, some accountability for their personal property. And it's not their property, it's the school property. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just wanted to put that in your ear as something to look into, because I can't imagine that's something you're happy hearing. No. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. I definitely think I'm, I definitely think we should review our policy, and you should have a conversation with the principals to set expectations as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, I'm uh, Brian Graf. I live at 137 Hill Street. Um, I just have a really short comment, um, maybe just to express agreement with or to, you know, maybe help reinforce some comments that were made earlier during the budget discussion by some folks on the board. Um, a point which I really agree with, which is, um, is just the idea that the board, you know, can and should play an advocacy role at this point in terms of the various forces that are acting on this district and many other districts um, in terms of helping to create the kind of situation we find ourselves in now year in and year out um, with regard to the school budget, right? And an ongoing shift of costs being sort of transferred over to property taxes, you know, uh, local taxes, in order to fund more and more of the services that we need. And I think what we're seeing is that it's an untenable situation over the long term. You know, um, we, it seems like we can't cut our way out of this, right? Like, and I think that means that the role that the board, together with the community plays in all of this, has to adapt to the situation, right? Um, I mean, I really think that, you know, if the board leads, people will follow. Like, we know there is energy in this town, you know, um, around education issues. So I really hope that that is something that the board, you know, makes a conscious choice to do. I think it matters how you talk about the budget to people, certainly, when, how you present it, how the information is contextualized, right? If you just talk about how dire the situation is, it doesn't agitate or galvanize anybody to action, right? It just depresses everybody. Um, I mean, so it's about explaining the seriousness situation, but also about what is at the root of that, but also rather than just, you know, expecting, explaining to people what's happening, that that's somehow going to move them to action, I think you have to lead people, right? They will follow you, we will follow you, right? Um, if you lead also in terms of thinking about what 
you as a board can do? What are the avenues available to you in order to really proactively push, for instance, the state legislature or the governor's office or any other number of places, right, that are acting on us right now to really take public stands and send a message as I think, you know, a number of boards in the state have started to do about this is an untenable, unacceptable situation, right? We can't just sit here and constantly implement one cut after another that comes down um, onto us. Um, and it's, it's hard work, um, and it's certainly a responsibility that the community has as well. It's not something that just sits on your shoulders. But I think, you know, you have the potential to really help sort of motivate people to get involved in that process. So I just want to support that idea. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm done. I'm, I can't handle it. I, it's turning me insane. This buzzing, I'm sorry for everybody. Oh, it's terrible. I, it's, 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 un, it's untenable. It's a boiler. It's untenable. It is untenable. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Go on. Sorry. Um, mics. Oh, it's the mics. It is. The, no, it's not. It's not. It's not, not even. The mics. It, yeah. No, it is the mics. It's just not. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Go on. it's really annoying. I'm Lynn Fryer. Yeah. Um, three, uh, 314 Wayne Street, and um, I'm glad to see as part of the. Um, packet that you guys are working on a policy for the park test and parents that have chosen to opt their children out because I'm one of those parents. Um, I'm a little, I would like to hear a little more about that and have that fleshed out because um, there's, I guess there are different grades of opting out and um, mm -hmm. some of them uh, sit a little better with me than others. Um, and then my other comment also to the park test is I have, you know, two kids and they're both incredibly bright and manifest that in different ways. But um, my daughter is a very conventional learner and, um, you know, always very engaged and interesting in school. And her comment on how's school going, what's, what's new, is she's just bored. And I can't help thinking that this doesn't have something to do with park preparation. And it breaks my heart. And just wanted to share that with you all. Thank you. Um, we are going to discuss the park part portion of tonight in new business. So I hope you can stick around for a few minutes uh, until then. Great. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing as there's no other public comment, I want to thank everybody for their comments. Uh, we'll get back to those uh, who uh, we took note of. Um, can we have uh, the board action items uh, now? Uh, Michelle, would you be willing to move the uh, curriculum motions, including yes. the, red, the read ins? I'm sorry, there are so many papers. I don't even know what I'm doing. Anyway, yeah. they are one through 14. Correct. <laughs> and did we, did, we actually put, did we actually say a motion for number 14? I don't think we did. I don't think so. So I'd like to move on behalf of the curriculum committee I, items one through fourteen. Four, but fourteen is uh, on the uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. that's so you make a motion on the on the recommendation of the superintendent to uh, what what to approve the development of a project based environmental science course. Okay. Done. So would like to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, is there a second for Michelle's one through fourteen? Second. So, Thank you. Yep. Are there any comments? <laughs> Further comments? Um, yep. Only the comment that um, I I am going to approve the um, that field trip and then in finance the uh, acceptance of that donation with the proviso that we're looking at this moving forward. I don't want to you know prevent the kids from going. Exactly. Much appreciated. Um, but um, but I do expect that we'll take a really hard look at this. Yeah, I think we should. This. Okay. Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Versa? Yes. Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simarusti? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. McFadden Dean Nicola? Yes. Mr. Roslowitz? Yes. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Catherine? I move items 1 through 22. Is there a second? Second. Any other further comments? Linda, a roll call, please. Ms. Aversa? Yes. 
Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. McFadden D. Nicola? Yes. Mr. Roslowitz? Yes. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Sorry. Uh, can I have, uh, Ajari, the personnel, the personnel communications? Can I, I'd like to move items one through nine on the agenda. Is there, a, is there a second? Linda? I mean, sorry, is there any further comments? Linda, roll call, please. Ms. Versa? Yes. Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. McFadden D. Nicola? Yes. Mr. Roslowitz? Yes. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Uh, and can we have the policy motions, please? Yes, I'd like to um, move the policies in item number one with the exception of 5561, which I'd like to table. Is there a mo uh, second? I'm sorry, was that 5561? 5561. Yeah. Okay. The um, one that Anne is gonna make comments on? That would be yeah. That's no, that, yeah. that's fine, yeah. That, that was just clarifying. You, oh, I'm sorry, the only comment I wanted to make, most of them say February 9th is the second reading date, but I'm sure that'll be changed. Oh, yeah. Um, the policies right. themselves actually say February, yeah. So she'll have to go in and um, search and destroy. Yeah. So I do have one comment. Um, I would actually agree uh, with uh, Kim on, um, on item eight of 3282. Uh, the shall not uh, uh, teacher shall not post updates of their status of social networking sites during normal working hours. Um, I think we should include. I think we should exclude lunch from that, um, and allow them. But the other ones, I think, should uh, stay as as is. So, do we want to read that in? So, yeah. Linda, um, I had a motion to to amend. I don't. Well, I'm sorry. Did, didn't we also? Because she also expressed I, a concern about whether or not they could use their title. Yeah. And right. wasn't it the discussion of the board that it was at with discretion? I, I, depending was that, on was that a discussion it was that a discussion at last at last board meeting? Discussion during first reading. I think so, yeah, at last yes. reading. I was, I was that it could oh, be okay. with discretion that they could use their title, particularly in professional use, but the the intent there was only to prohibit them from using that title if it was in a derogatory or mm -hmm abject uh, use of that title. My concern would be, um, this question I think is fair, but my concern would uh, be that, plus um, the illusion that they're speaking on behalf of the district. Sure, right. Uh, that well, but I mean, as yeah, a board members, we can use our title, but you have to give the proviso that you're not speaking for the board. So, you know, yeah. I, if I testify somewhere, I right. say I'm a member of the Highland Park Board of Education, but I am not speaking on behalf of the board. Teachers should have that same right. So. Um, you know, I'd certainly be willing to table 3282 and 4282. They're not mandatory. It would give uh, either you, Adam, or you and Israel the opportunity to sit down with Kim, hash out language that's agreeable to everyone. Um, it's not putting us at risk for anything for QSAC. I don't see the danger in doing that. Okay. I agree. That's fine. I agree. You agree with that? So, um, Number eight, though, everybody is okay with changing eight to just lunch hours, correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes. And well, then. We, I mean, if we're tabling, then let's table. Yeah. Just read yeah. Okay. And then I was just wanted, but if I if I rewrite, I just want the sense of the board so we can. Right. I don't. We don't go through six loops. Six loops. Oh okay. yeah, on eight. Yeah, I, I agree with that part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All so right. so then I would like to move item one with the exception of 3282, 4282, and 5561, which we would like to table. Second. Second. Oh. I'm just nodding. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other further, co further comments? Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Aversa? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. McFadden D. Nicola? Yes. Mr. Roslowitz? Yes. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. <sighs> All right. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, president's report. Uh, short president's report. Um, myself and Israel met with uh, two parents uh, and a um, 
a child psychi psych psychologist over the last two we uh, few weeks uh, to discuss the transgender policy. Um, we took their concerns uh, to, to uh, we took their concerns uh, and uh, their information provided to us. And uh, my, I am taking responsibility to uh, rewrite the uh, transgender policy uh, to include many of the concerns that we wholeheartedly agreed with uh, to make it more uh, friendly for students and more. Um, uh, equitable for all of for all involved. So look for that in the coming board meeting. Um, what else do we do? We do anything else in the last? Uh, that was about. <laughs> that, we just talked a lot. Uh, that, that, that's it. And the other part of the president's report that I wanted to report is the uh, federal government is reviewing the uh, nutritional guidelines. There was a very good article in the New York Times uh, this week. Uh, they're taking. Uh, they're putting much more emphasis on fat and sugar um, and processed foods in what school districts offer uh, to their students. Um, I look forward to the new guidelines. It is going to affect the uh, services that we offer, uh, but I think it's going to offer. Uh, more he healthier options and more well balanced, uh, well balanced option and fresher, more uh, fresh vegetables as well. Um, and also acknowledge uh, different eating styles like gluten free, veganism, and uh, ve and vegetarianism as well. So I look forward to those from the the federal government um, to be implemented. Um, that's it on the um, president's report. Um, Old business uh, that we have a motion uh, to approve the revised board meeting calendar of two th for 2015. Um, I have a few questions on it, um, but I'll let anybody else speak first. I need to look at it. First. <laughs> I'm, to I'm to sorry. Is there a motion on the table? Well, it There's says no approval of revised board meeting calendar. Did, did we have a calendar that went yeah. past uh, the end of the school year? No. I believe that the last calendar August. only went to August. Yeah. I think this one takes it out to December. It should be an other. Oh, the, oh 2014 to 2015? Yeah. Thank you. The other reason oh, was to change the start time in order to gotcha. um, this thing. allow the, the board one. to um, convene earlier and recess to executive right. session. Oh, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, we're adding to wow. So, but let me oh, clarify. So is this going to be clarified for the public? I'm going to clarify that right now. The Board of Education is going to, for legal reasons, is going to be coming into open session at 6.30 and then immediately recessing into uh, o into closed session uh, for an hour. We will not be starting a public, me a public meeting. Uh, well, we will be starting the public meeting at 6.30. We will not be starting the public portion until 7.30 at any given time. But for legal reasons, we will be notifying uh, a 6.30 uh, start time. So just to clarify that. Okay. Um, I have a concern about the time between March and April. Um, it's over, it's about yeah, a month. It's, it's a month for, for meetings. We do um, have spring break. I know spring break is in there. It's, it's also budget time, it's crazy. and we're All gonna right. have to we're gonna have to add a yeah, we're, we're gonna have to have a meeting. Year. So yeah, I mean, and I think that what happens is we end up having to add a meeting, but I don't think we have to codify okay. that. Okay. So um, after the conversation at next meeting, um, which will be March 9th, and then we'll have the 23rd, and if, after the 23rd, if we need to add a meeting, we we will do so. Right. Okay. Is there any comments? Can I get a motion? Oh. I, yep. I don't know if I can comment here, but um, I think that there's a lot on our plate, like was mentioned. And um, I'm looking at these dates, and I'm thinking that you know this is this is quite a bit. But I think we need actually more. I don't know that we can add, but um, it just seems like the amount of stuff that we have to digest and all of the different issues that we have that we're dealing with, you know. Um, it just seems like a lot. Like I have notes here that go on for for days, and I know I've been talking a lot tonight. So um, no, I just feel overwhelmed by everything that we need to work on, and um, you know we haven't really even touched on a lot of this stuff. So I was just wondering if that's a possibility to add more than just the one. But um, you know I would think that and more than just the one in April or. Well, I was thinking that you know we might want to consider, and I know everyone's got jobs and families, but might want to consider meeting on alternating weeks for committee meetings to be able to, you know, shorten up the time that we're starting. We could actually start at 6.30 for our public meeting. I can't start, mm -hmm. I can't start. So, okay. But here's something yeah. that you should know. If your committee is amenable, 
you can arrange um, additional meetings okay. if you feel like oh. you're not if you yeah. if you feel because for example when we start reviewing policy you may feel that you are not going to have enough time you probably are not going to have enough time to review policy and do the work of your committee right. so you can you can arrange for additional meetings you can meet here or you can meet at one of your houses that's perfectly acceptable and not on a monday okay not on a monday yeah. it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be an official meeting day. Okay, right. that's good to know. Because you are only three members, so it's not, you know, Quorum. it doesn't count as a... Right. I wasn't aware of that because, you know, again, like the information that we're getting is the same time that we're getting, um, same time that the public is getting the information. So I didn't have any longer to view this information um, any longer than anyone else in town. And it feels like as a board member, I would like to be able to do a better job than well, what I can get done on the weekend. Well, as the, uh, the committee process should be um, predictive of what's going to be on the agenda for the following week. So things that we discuss in committee this week should, should, ap should appear on the agenda for the following for the following meeting. So okay. once we get into the flow, I think it, you'll notice that, that that is the case. Um, and you'll have time to digest and make comments to the administration uh, before the public and before um, it is put on for the motion. Because okay. we all I think we all agree that this is a lot to digest. Um, it's always it always has been. I'm, glad I'm, not in I'm sorry. Are you saying that committee? What we do in committee is something that would be on an agenda two it, weeks we from because we we've never done that. That's what we try to do, and it it normally is. We so, for example, if you discuss something in the curriculum committee, right, it it will appear on the following agenda. No, I mean I understand that. I just don't know that that's ever been our practice. It's, I mean, as long as I've yes. been on the board, we it never has not. Been committee our has been. We talk about whatever's on the agenda that night. Well, you talk about what's on the agenda, but you also on the report on there's two parts of the committee meetings for least finance. It has always been you talk, you discuss what is on the agenda, and then you discuss upcoming issues and motions that will be needed. Like personnel is an exception sure. to this, so I mean it, it doesn't happen, but it certainly does curriculum. happen in yeah. curriculum, and and I think it also happens in finance. Finance, it happens. Finance. Linda is great at preparing yeah. uh, no, notes so on. on. If you can, can you show? Can I actually have the finance report and the? So there's two parts of it. There's the agenda item, right. and then there's uh, report items. So the okay. report items are what's coming up oh, great. Uh, mm -hmm. for the for the finance committee and for the overall board, and it's normally discussed um, throughout uh, what to report on and how to uh, and, what, and what the board can expect for a coming meeting. And the curriculum is the same. Curriculum is the same way. Okay. So I guess if anything is left over from tonight that can be reviewed any other time with committee meeting yeah. members sorry committee members and yeah. then it's getting really late i'm sorry and um and then i don't i mean i i i get this information on the same day as the public is what i'm saying so well, you I get the agenda on the same day as the public you also get a a, a lot of um a lot of um, additional materials at, or access to a lot of additional materials on the shared drive. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can definitely keep myself plain mm -hmm. busy looking yeah. at those things. I guess I was just wondering what the procedure was in order to get together and speak about these things right. rather than just, you know, in the vacuum of my home by myself. So the hardest thing that I always ha uh, dealt with was the fact that um, we actually don't run the school. The administration runs the school. Absolutely. So when things come to us, it's advise, It's more of an advise and consent um, area than it is dictation of of uh, of what of what is going on. So when we, I guess what kind of what I'm trying to say is sometimes we're powerless, and I felt that. Um, for a long, for a very long time, when I was a, a new board member, mm -hmm. um, but um, in terms of the conversations, the conversations happen here in new business and old business in the committee yeah. in the committee reports, <clears throat> um, and um, any additional information we try to get to every board out to every board member at the same time yeah. as well. No, that's understood. The conversation happens yeah. here. I just I feel like just in order to be informed about making decisions, not running the school, not deciding what's best, mm -hmm. but just to be able to you know know. Do we have an elective? You know, do we have physics too? Mm -hmm. Do we like any of these things that you yeah, know you right. can't possibly know? It's a lot of questions, like two minutes before the meeting. Yeah, yeah. right. It's and of course, the website doesn't help. But you know, that seems to be well, fixed. That, but I mean, yeah. that stuff is actually available on the website. Right. If you wanted to find 
like the, the high school have, course book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, and that's current with those classes are all actually being offered this year, the ones in the from the September. So in the high school there the are course is there are a, the from, course book encompass is normally a 3 to 5 year uh, course book. Uh -huh. Um it we So in, not in every the, course right. is offered every year. There are right. some courses that are offered in alternate years, yeah. but all of those courses are still being offered in some way or shape or form. Right. right. And like AP Chem and AP Physics are rotated every year. Same with uh, AP, same with AP uh, English language and foreign and AP lit and lit, lang. Lit, lit and lang, lang because we just don't have enough enrollment to fill them every year. So wow. we give each senior and junior a chance to enroll in each of them, but they have to they take it in alternate years. I guess I mean at some point it might be nice to have a sort of a different committee s structure or timeline where we, you know, we saw things tonight and then we voted on them at the next meeting. I, I'm not sure how possible that is, but so, it would, you know. So we did, for a, while, for a while, this board did have two different meetings. One meeting with no motions at all. Right. It would be only committee reports. So to, let's say tonight is the first meeting of the month. It would be reports on the committees. It would be discussions on committees. And the following week, the following meeting mm. would be all, um, all motions and Right. It, it changes to that. The okay. issue came with that was that there was too much time, uh, there was not enough time in between meetings to make changes, uh, and there was also emergent issues that came up that the board needed to act on. And once those emergent issues came up, uh, something else became a little bit more emergent, and it uh, it kind of snowballed into where we are today. Right. Hmm. This I, I mentioned this after I went to the um, school board's workshop in whatever month that was now, I'm sorry, my brain can't work with that thing going on for three seconds. Um, but there is another district that set out a template for a, a really successful um, board committee structure that works kind of more that way. So, I mean, it's something I'll, you know, I'll gather that information again and present. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it was something that I, I'm, at this point, not necessarily supportive of because we tried it and it just, well, it, 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 this is, I think it's a different structure. So and I'm happy to, we're happy to look at it. Thank you for yeah. all that clarification. Uh, yeah, um, and in terms of meetings, we try to do two a month. Um, for the most part, we do. Um, it, there's a lot of work that goes in by our administration to prepare for a meeting Absolutely. for us. Yeah. Um, as much as I like to think we are uh, the most important people, the 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 um, the, uh, the amount of the amount of stuff that you guys have that, that they have to do to cut just get us the nine of us information that we that we want it takes up a number of hours that um, can sometimes be better spent uh, actually managing students and staff. So um, there's a time frame to all yeah. that. I mean, Linda knows yeah. that all this information is due to my office by a certain time. You get. You know, Linda knows that the information is due to my office at a certain given time, and then it'll give us an, another op enough opportunities to forward the information to you, so you can have enough time right. to review all of the documents. But so there's yeah, a yeah, lot I of work behind. I hope I didn't recently. come across as complaining about. No, 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 no right. not at all. It was more of a structural thing, yeah, not a. Not we didn't all. get enough information. No, no. Right. Just to, all right. Um, so we do need a motion to um, approve the calendar for the 2015 year, school year? I thought or, or, year. No, I think so. this includes all, this includes uh, beyond August. Oh, I thought somebody right. The board meeting yeah. calendar. calendar. Right. The board well, calendar. The board. Okay. Concerned okay. December 14th. Is there a second? Second. 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 So, we have a roll call, please. <laughs> Ms. Aversa? Yes. Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simarosti? Yes. Ms. G Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. McFadden, D. Nicola? Yes. Mr. Roslowitz? Yes. Ms. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Is there any other old business? Uh, new business. Uh, let's first address the approval of the district calendar. Um, we received a number of emails about uh, uh, approving the calendar for the next school year um, to make everybody's planning a little bit easier. Uh, we're going to uh, move it tonight. Um, it is on your, uh, it is on your drive. Um, we are offering 180 days uh, this year. Um, we, I know this board, the contract says the board offers 182 days, or the policy says we offer 180, the contract says we have 182 days. We're using those two extra days uh, for professional development uh, in the beginning of the year. That's what, <clears throat> right, professional development that we're front loading. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sounds so, um, are there any comments? Because if there are not, may I just clarify oh, that? Absolutely. Uh, 
The S September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, those are staff days, all, all four of them? Yes. yes. Okay, all right. Yes. Two of Got them it. are going to be first day, The first day students are part of the CA. The next I know, day but is they're, gonna be they're not going to, I think, I don't think all four days are staff days because that would, I, that would be four. So then that's four days, not two, yeah. Yeah, those are only two of those days are staff days. Just want to make sure students aren't coming One's in on staff. two of those. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Okay. Two are, two, two, are PD, two, are two are PD days, and then the other two are to set up classroom and. Oh, oh uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, it says one, two is staff PD. Yeah. We didn't know what three and four were. Great. Yeah. Thanks. It's, cla it's to come in classroom, set up classroom and all that. Two PDs, <coughs> one classroom prep, and one meeting with the uh, with the principals and with the guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And, and I, I believe we're going to do a, um, a par uh, some sort of party or something this year as well? You know. Maybe. <laughs> we're going to give the teachers a barbecue. A barbecue. A barbecue, nice. Yes. Is it me or is spring break really long next year? I didn't have a problem with that. <laughs> I'm not saying I have a problem with it. It just looks. It's not longer than winter break was. Winter break this year. Was no, I know winter break at, yeah. was. Right. Two weeks. It's, it's where do you see two weeks? No, two weeks in December. I was looking. It was not really two. Uh, oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty close. No, it's close. You know, you're talking it's about. It's the same. Yeah, it's the as it usually is. It's, it's Good Friday off. Yeah. Yeah, and the half day. Do it, and yeah, Friday. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't think it is longer than normal. Is it okay? I think it usually often that um, wrote. It, you end up with the the Easter Monday being the last day, and so if you just switch that Friday to the, and Monday, it'll all right. it'll all look right. By the way, there is no Same. there is no Easter it's Monday. There is no Easter Monday this year. Just letting well, making that clear. <laughs> just we're not taking off. It's not a half day. It's, 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 already it's already off. It's, already off. it's oh. built yeah, thought, into the week. Sorry, that, that's Way to my, lay down the law, Adam. That's the, semi, that's the semantic <laughs> side of me. It's, uh, I was looking at the, I thought the fourth was Easter Monday. So. Uh, nope. Just no. wanted to make a point. That I did want to make that point. He was so I tough. Call, it was good. You know I you did. call it Easter Monday. You yeah. call it what you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the debates on that day. Um, okay. And do we have it? I think, didn't we last year indicate that... Um, a couple of days that if we had too many snow days, they'd start coming off the top. Like I think President's Day was one, and yeah, is that not the yellow? It's already built in. The, 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 yellow, the yellow box. The yellow box. Okay, so that's there. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And it's just nice to see that there's professional development in May and April. Yes. Very good. Fantastic. Yep. Just want to say. Okay. Good job. Yeah, Can we do we have a motion on the table yet? Can I have a motion to approve the calendar if there's no more comments? So moved. I count on you. Uh, is yeah. there another uh, is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> very very good question. So um is it can I have a cover roll call please? Ms. Aversa? Yes. Ms. Bull? Yes. Ms. Simarosti? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. McFadden D. Nicola? Yes. Mr. Roslowitz? Yes. Ms. Sherber? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. So the park resolution. Uh, the park resolution will not be uh, put forth today. It will be tabled. Uh, uh, there will not, well, the board will not be uh, submitting a resolution, but we are going to be sending a letter home uh, discussing the overall um, procedure for park. Um, the board, um, so w with the consultation with our attorney and the uh, and Mr. Soto, um, the board will, the, the, we have received a number of um, e uh, emails and letters of parents who are asking to refuse the uh, test. Uh, we are going to accommodate that um, and provide a alternate, uh, ta there's gonna be a few options outlined in the, uh, in the letter. Um, one being uh, a student uh, being able to stay at home uh, with no repercussions, uh, and one also being a alternate setting uh, for uh, for the student who cho whose parents refuse to um, opt out. Uh, sorry, who uh, refuse to take the test. Um, so getting very late. Um, the sorry, the uh, letter the letter will be sent home. The board is asking, and the, the administration is asking for any parent who does refuse to notify us. Um, otherwise, uh, we will have some difficulties on test day, but a, te a refusal letter is going to be uh, required uh, to uh, accommodate a, a student. Uh, would you like to speak to it a little bit further? 
Yeah, just, just very quickly. Uh, we have been receiving refusal letters. Uh, I will be writing a personal letter to each parent. Um, we're going to differentiate uh, the type of activities that the, the students will be engaged in that particular day. I know Adam had mentioned the possibilities of kids staying home. We're going to encourage kids to come to school. Uh, we're going to be providing an alternate setting, and uh, we're going to give them uh, the opportunity to either read a book or some instructional um, activities to engage in. So we, we do have, uh, I spoke to all of the principals, uh, we have the settings in place, and we have the people to monitor the students. So I'm going to be encouraging all of the parents that have the kids come to school. Uh, you should be getting a letter uh, no later this than week. Wednesday. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm actually almost finished drafting the letter. Okay. And I just want to say on one general topic, if um, this test was not mandated by the state, I think it would be the general consensus of this board to not offer it. Um, we are in a uh, very pr tricky predicament right now, but it is a um, it is a mandate from the state and it is the situation we are uh, presented with and we're trying to accommodate everybody's needs and wants uh, in, the, in terms of uh, this uh, tricky situation. So I hope everybody has been patient with us and I thank everybody for their input um, from both sides and um, hopefully we will move forward uh, in, a, in a very positive way. And I just want to say how much I appreciate, you know, the, the growth on this subject from last year to this year and I appreciate Mr. Um, Mr. Soto's work on this and the board's work on this and um, to what you're saying Adam about uh, whether the district would choose to or not to administer it I don't, I don't you know I don't think that's within our purview um, but what I would encourage people to do is um, it's not just the state that mandates this, this is actually a federal mandate. This is one of these things that is federal policy, it rolls down to state policy, and you know, districts and boards then end up on the front line of these issues when it is, it is so far outside of our control. Um, but currently, right now, the federal government is working on reauthorizing ESEA, which is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which is also better known as the No Child Left Behind Act. Um, part of the conversation around that reauthorization is whether or not to continue with the mandate for annual testing. Um, it's probably one of the most hotly contested parts of that reauthorization, and that conversation is happening now. In fact, the House is set to vote on their version of um, the reauthorization bill on Friday. Um, an organization that I'm involved with and work with, the Network for Public Education, actually has a current letter writing campaign to um, federal, federal representatives in the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, to ask them to do away with that mandate, to ask them to return to pre and CLB testing levels, which was actually grade span testing, which was testing students once in elementary, once in middle, once in high school. Um, I think there is a broad consensus among educators and a lot of education researchers that that is more than sufficient to provide both state and federal governments with the accountability measures that they require to know that students are achieving at the levels that we expect without creating this kind of impact that we're starting to see from o the overtesting that I think a lot of parents and educators feel are now happening in public education. So I would encourage anyone here tonight or anybody watching at home to go to networkforpubliceducation.org um, and take a look at that letter writing, can letter writing campaign and consider sending a letter to um, your congressman for us, for to Frank Pallone. Thank you. Um, I do also just want to say that this this procedure is uh, going to be in place for this year and this year alone. Uh, it will be reevaluated, um, and whatever comes from the state and the federal government will be taken into account. Um, and whatever learnings we have from the way that this is handled this year will also be taken into account. Yeah, just one more detail. Yeah. I don't want to offend any of the parents. We, we, we have the uh, number of uh, students that are not going to be taking the test. However, uh, I would be remiss as a superintendent if I didn't uh, put my piece to uh, encourage parents to reconsider. So that's yeah. going to be a, a piece that, that will be added to right. that letter. Uh, and yeah. if we do not get any uh, reconsideration, then we move forward to right. the next step. <laughs> it, it's my serious concern that uh, this is going to segregate. This is going to segregate and make uh, our students different. When high school, when middle school and bar and Bardo schools are a time where students are already different and differences are noted and taken into account. So I have the same concerns and would encourage everybody to reconsider as well. So I, I just yep. one thing to say on that is that no, um, I, I do think that my experience last year with my son was for him personally empowering. Um, this was a kid who felt that he didn't have a choice in pretty much anything that happened at school. And this was 
um, an empowering experience for him. And I don't know that I can speak to every child. It's, it's um, you know, impossible for me. But um, I was pleasantly surprised at his experience um, in standing up for what he thought was the right thing to do. So um, I just hope that we, moving forward, take Brian Graff's suggestion to advocate um, and really place blame where it belongs. And it certainly doesn't belong at the district level, as far as I can tell. It doesn't belong sometimes at the state level. <laughs> you know, it really is every single family deciding what they think is right to do. And I think we need to help educate parents about what is happening on the federal level. And I want to thank publicly thank Darcy for doing her work with the Network for Public Education. Um, because I, I don't know that I knew half as much as I knew last year <laughs> as I do this year. It's a lot to keep up with. So I understand we're going to have to revisit it next year, every year after that. But um, I think that I would personally like to encourage parents to go seek out information and certainly come on Thursday to the HPEA event at the high school. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Is there any other new business? Uh, yep. Forgive me if I stray back to something, but uh, in terms of the mascots, so we were going to consider it for and bring it to discussion next week, correct? Um, I, I guess, I mean, I was quite convinced by Saskia's um, pr presentation and her clarification. Um, I think what we should do is we should have allow, open it up, give it back to the principals just for any comments. Um, but I guess okay. if you would like to have a conversation at the board and if um, the board wants to weigh in after we weigh on them a little, think about them a little bit, I'm more than happy to ask. Uh, that was the impression I got okay. from what you said before. And then one quick question on that. As Sasuke Marina is in, in essence a, uh, a somewhat an employee of the school district. She's, she's a volunteer. She's a volunteer, volunteer of the school. Well, it, does the since she's doing this work as a volunteer for the school district, does the school district own all the rights to any of the material that she creates? I think she set that up for us. Yes, I, I, Chris. Yeah, she she set it up, and we do. Yeah, she set it up for us so that we own it. So that we own it. Okay, yeah. great. And then uh, my second thing would be uh, there was a number of items in the budget. Uh, related to technology, um, I still have an underlying concern that we don't have a technology plan that goes past 2016, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see something done. I mean, we had a number of technology plan review meetings, et cetera, last year. I'd like to see a technology plan put together that encompasses, because we're going to have to resubmit to the to uh, the county, correct? Yep, yeah, absolutely. So where would we be at in terms of a comprehensive technology plan moving past the uh, 2016 school year. When do we normally initiate? Sorry, go. No, we, we in fact. Uh, I, something. I believe the district had a three-year uh, technology plan, and so I, I, you know, because of QSAC and a number of other initiatives that that we're focusing on, um, I haven't uh, met with Brian yet. And so certainly, uh, Linda, please, you know touch base with me tomorrow so, to schedule a, a meeting with Brian so we can begin the process. Okay, and, and, and we will welcome your, and I, I know this is an area that uh, you seem to be, uh, you have a certain level of expertise, so I welcome your input on this one. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we should, we should uh, grade a committee of parents, teachers, board members. There's a checklist actually on the report of who should be included. Um, yep. So, like I said, I have this list here. I just want to um, add that the study commission that the um, governor actually put together, uh, they're still taking testimony via email s about the park testing from anyone. <laughs> um, my children, actually, I told them about this, and they decided they were going to write an email about their experience with the testing. Um, so I don't know if this is appropriate, but I want to give the email. Um, so the study commission is study commission at doe.state.nj.us. And um, like I said, they're, they're still gathering testimony, and they have published it online. So if anyone would like to hear what people have been saying at these different events, it would be great, because I attended the one in Jackson. I attended the one in Blackwood, New Jersey. Um, it was six hours in Jackson. It was four hours in Blackwood. And only one person spoke up in defense of park. And they were a PTA paid uh, performer, I'll call them. <laughs> uh, it was incredible. 
So I, I do encourage people to read the testimony and submit No, the sorry, sorry, we can't. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, it's study commission at doe.state.nj.us. Thank you. Welcome. Any other new business? Uh, yes. Um, I, this sounds like trivia compared to you know the issues we've been talking about. The recess thing at Bartle, there, there, there is quite a bit of uh, parental concern about that. Um, I realize it's been cold and all, all this stuff. I, I appreciate your candor and just saying that you don't have the resources to do outdoor recess when it's cold out. And um, I don't know, I'm wondering if there's any way we can look at that. Is it that we don't have enough paras who are available to go out for recess? I've volunteered to Mr. Benjamin to try to put together you know, a library of uh, used outerwear for kids who might not come to school appropriately dressed. If that's an issue, that's something that, as a PTO member, I'd be happy to, to help with. Um, is there any movement there? Any room for movement? And um, actually, I have something to tag on to that. Was that actually an issue because of the schedule change? Because I felt like I know, I know, it was an issue the classroom at, before the schedule mm, changed. So mm, I, yeah, yeah, it, it didn't seem to me like it was actually just because of the schedule change. It seemed like my daughters were in the classroom before mm, the schedule changed. I know we became an issue at Irving. Mm. Uh, that's that's a definite thing. At Irving, it became an issue. I don't. I'm not too familiarized that becoming an issue here at Bartle. Yes. I'll have that conversation with Benjamin. I do know that in the pass, at least for Irving, uh, during the winter time, the kids used to go to the gym, but now the right. gym is being occupied during their lunch. Right. All right. And uh, we don't have enough space to, uh, in, you know, in, in the lunch rooms because obviously the kids are eating lunch. Um, so the issue pertaining to Bartle, I would have to speak to um, Mr. Benjamin about that one. I know he's been thinking about it. I'm sure he's overwhelmed with everything happening right now. Yeah. yeah. And I've been in touch with Sarah Kirk about this because my daughter, you know, everyone's kids, it seems like, are crawling the walls. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're allowed to walk in circles in the auditorium. Um, they're allowed to play games. I asked if she could have a jump rope, and they said they had jump ropes, but then they got rid of them. Maybe there was some reason for that. But I, I know that Ms. Kirk said that she was concerned about this as a former gym teacher. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a good suggestion, but could they possibly have like some sort of guided exercise mm -hmm. with the teacher? Could they yeah. do jumping jacks? Mm -hmm. Could yeah, they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that seems, yeah. That's good. To see and that. by the way, that's not germane to Bartle or Irving. That's that's happening across the state. Absolutely. That's you, know, yeah, you know, when I was a principal, that was the same situation. I used to call it the shining effect. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie The Shining? Yeah. yeah. As it was I winter time when you put kids too long together, <laughs> things start to happen mm -hmm. because they need to go outside. But <laughs> yeah. All right, then. All right, so I'll speak to Mr. Benjamin about that okay, tomorrow. Okay, great. Is there any other new business? Uh, just one quick thing. Yep. Uh, during the public comment about uh, the bilingual um, advisory committee, I just was wondering, would it be possible to ask the member of the public for the citation to the OCR data? I, I tried to Google it just now. I couldn't find it. Was it, was it not in the letter? The I don't think it was in the letter. I mean, I read the letter uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, uh, I, I have to say I'm not a big fan of this not being able to have a simple interaction if somebody's up there and holding it all to new business and okay, I'd well, like us to think are, about that a little. There are some. Oh, maybe it is in there. I'm yeah, sorry. I think, I it's think been it a while was. since I looked at it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it is in there. Yellow. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, not really. It was in your email. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I'm sorry. It's just we try to follow the procedure as much as we can. Although now there's public comments. Yeah, I was about to say we're about to open it up for public comments. So um, I still had something else yeah. for new business nope. that left over. Um, just a thought that I had actually based on Saskia getting up and everyone commending her for you know doing this great volunteer work and Catherine saying you know how much she enjoyed having all these grants to you know to report out. Is it possible that we could consider putting out an advertisement for a volunteer grant writer for the district? Sure. Like I'm also willing put to pay those for two one. together. I mean, it, it, look at what we're looking at for a budget. I don't know that we were going to create a budget line for that, but it, there have got to be a number of people in this community that have grant writing expertise. That would be if we could get one, two, three of them to mm -hmm. each, you know, look at one or two grants that could potentially bring us in a nice chunk of change. I know Miss Pasichow is working with one of them as a volunteer. 
and I don't know what you know the success of that has been, but they've been working together. This on would something. be a wonderful thing to put in our lose letter. It could Perfect. be something we put out for the public information committee. Sure. Ask them to put out in their you know Highland Park whatever the paper is yeah. that comes out to us. I mean, just kind of put out a general call that we're you know we're looking for Perfect. for help for grant writing. Can you write something up and get it out? Perfect. Thank you. And of course, I have something else to say. I'm sorry. No, that's right. Um, I know that we were talking about the. Um, the need for the LEP advisory committee, the public advisory committee. I also wonder, do we have, uh, do we have as a course offering Spanish for native speakers? No, not that I know. Of. Not I, I know that we have a major, like a lot of Mandarin speakers in our district. I, I would assume we do have a large number of Spanish-speaking yeah, students. We used to have that. I know that. I, yeah, if it could have gone, I think it actually might have gone with that was Spanish five, I believe. Or was that a different class? I, I don't know. The answer is, but okay. we used to we used to have for native. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. That would be great because I I I'd be you know completely bored out of my mind if I was a native Spanish speaker mm -hmm. sitting in a Spanish class. Well, I think the, the language well, has have, been like an issue for a while been with a, children. Even the, even if it's not your native language, if you're just excelling in it, and then you got to a certain point, yeah. and there isn't a Spanish four and a Spanish five, uh, yeah, and those kids were either forced to either you know maybe take French one. But I think that just right. comes, unfortunately, just with the the size of the district and the lack of students that would be taking that class. I see. I think you hit the nail on the head. Unfor unfortunately, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we combine. If we could do it, but. But it's probably something we could revisit, but that's... You hit the nail on the head. We, combi we combined Spanish 4 and 5 at one point because there just wasn't enough enrollment for... Um, for very yeah. no, right. Now we have more just because the middle school program is stronger. Okay. And so the kids are going into Spanish 5. It, I, I think that's... Oh, yeah. So it's something that we should look at. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. Okay. And... I, I had one more question about the park. Yeah. This is also it looks like if we're overlapping the schedules for the park being taken at Bartle Middle and High School, it looks like the entire month of March we are somehow related to the park, somehow doing something park related. So the computers that we have available that I, you know, I would love for them to be used for instructional purposes, are they all being set aside for park test taking? Because I don't know that we have we don't have a one-to-one -one no. computer to student ratio, I know that. So it's not as if some kids can still do their schoolwork and classwork on the Chromebooks. So it would be nice to have numbers behind, you know, to understand what, um, how this test is taxing our classrooms. Do, uh, do all the, the the separate schools have schedules now for they park? Because yeah. I mean that was something that at the meeting that wasn't. Yeah. Is, so is, when is that information going to be? They've been sent out. Uh, yeah, I just saw something. Uh, oh really? Yeah. Or for Bartle, they L letters went out already. Oh okay. okay. All the schools, all three schools, sent out their letters. Saying when the testing administration Absolutely. dates were. Yeah. Okay. And we're not getting rid of midterms and finals like other districts have done. No. No. I like that. Okay. Is there any other new business? Hmm? The G and T Not stuff that. that I printed out. Okay. Um, I found some interesting research that actually dates to 1992, <laughs> and then um, supplemental stuff that backs it up from September 2014, and um, it just it talks about tracking and ability grouping. And I know that this was a you know, hot topic last year, and, and there were some issues with implementing and not implementing, whatever. But um, I just wanted to pass this to everyone and make copies for everybody right. um, so that we could better educate ourselves about what that means. Um, cool. So I'll just pass this out, and maybe we can discuss it for next time. Mm -hmm. So I, it's clear, and as I said, and I said earlier, oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's, there's the sense of the board, yeah. I think, that the g and program needs to be looked at in greater detail. Um, I think we will not necessarily have time to do that before or during budget season. Um, but for after budget season, it might be one of the first things to uh, go on the agenda uh, right. to get a report on and for to implement for the following year if there is any changes. OK. I was Fantastic. just hoping that we could, you know, like I said, the reading specialist issue, maybe integrating right. that. So, so that's it's definitely a budget conversation, so we're going to have to have that during budget time. So I just a greater g and uh, conversation of identification, needs, uh, appropriate use of funds, 
that probably will have to happen after budget, but in terms of ser services, that can okay. happen during the budget pr presentations. Okay, great. Sound good? Yep. Perfect. Very good. Thank you. Is there any other new business? Anything from this side of the aisle? <laughs> huh? um, seeing no new business, let's move on to uh, public comment. The, board reckon, the Highland, Park board of uh, Highland Park Board of Education uh, recognizes uh, public participation and reserve this time for your comments. I have some comments about um, the park. Um, my name is Allison Salerno. I live on Grant Avenue. Um, I have a like a logistics question. I understand you're setting a policy that the parents have to write a refusal letter. Um, what do you plan to do in the event that a kid shows up for park testing and tells the proctor, "I'm not taking the test"? What, what's the plan? I mean, I, in an ideal letter? world you're going to get all the refusal letters on time. But what are you going to do if a kid says, I'm not, I'm refusing the test? It becomes a, it, it becomes I'm a discipline. Mr. Soda. That's a, that's it's a, a disciplinary. It is a discipline. Yeah. Okay, because no, other districts fine. are handling it differently. Like the district where I work, we were told, you know, yeah, ideally they absolutely need a refusal letter. Mm -hmm. But if a kid shows up to your room, your test room, and says, I'm refusing the test, they can refuse the test. And in our district, we're not providing with an alternate location. So I realize that decision makes it trickier. We're just saying they have they can bring in recreational reading. But I, I guess I would be concerned about that kid because they're not necessarily they're not being disruptive in the in the traditional sense of a kid disrupting a class in the ways that we're familiar with. So I just would I would hope you think about that a little bit because not all parents are organized. Not all, you know, sometimes people make decisions the day before, that kind of thing. And I would hate to see a child like that receive a discipline that's really not fitting the quote, quote, crime. That just doesn't make sense to me. The other thing I want to say is that um, I did have a test, as you know, I did have a test refusing child last year on Pearson's um, New Jersey biocompetency exam, which has whatever. Um, <laughs> Not a test that I think is worth a student's time, um, or at least my student's time, my child's time. Um, he received more than one negative comment from staff members about his, uh, not, not much less from his peers, but we can't control what parents are saying to their children, which ends up in the cafeteria, whatever. But I would really encourage you, because the board has made its disdain known, some of the board members, for people who refuse to have you know have their children refuse tests and I just would really I really see it as a parental decision and I would really ask you Mr. Soto to make sure your staff treats all children respectfully regardless of what kind of decisions their parents make as a teacher I would never comment on any really any aspect of a child's family life you know their religion their choice of dress or their decision to refuse or not refuse a test and I was very disappointed that more than one staff member made a comment to my child um, saying that they, that he that Lucas was making the district look bad and I don't know where that came from if it was just the teacher's opinion if it was the former superintendent's opinion but that we don't I don't want that I don't want other kids to have to deal with that kind of frankly obnoxious um, commentary from a teacher. It's, it's just really unkind and uncalled for. So I wouldn't, while the board, uh, Mr. Sherman's made it clear, and, and you're saying you want to encourage people to take the test, you don't think it's right, the parents are refusing. These are really personal decisions that families are making, and our personal opinions about it are irrelevant if you're in an education, education setting. So again, I don't want those kids to have to deal with comments like that. I'm going to be honest with you. So you're, you're surprising me with that comment. I didn't tell and, you about and, it at the time. Uh, and I'm a little bit upset that any of... No, no, no. Um, I told you. I, you, hmm, you have so much on your I plate. Do. But I did email you about that at the hmm. time. And you said, I, I emailed you know, the teacher. I'm not going to say the person's no, name. No, no, no. I emailed you and the teacher. and. 
um, they, it, you said it was addressed. I, I, I don't expect you to remember every oh, email I, oh, okay. you ever got. All right, all right. So, so, this is, so this is not another... No, no, this is the, talking we're talking about the same last year. Okay, okay I got it. I'm now. just saying, I got moving it. forward, okay. I think it's important for staff to keep their personal opinions out of those kind of decisions, just like just like staff does with other family decisions. I concur they with you. They don't necessarily Absolutely. agree with yeah. parents do all kinds yeah. of things. Right. That we don't I agree appreciate with. that. Okay. Absolutely. No, I, I, I thought it happened no, this no, year. No. Okay. You would have heard from right. me already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I would have. <laughs> I just want to clarify yeah. one thing that it's not that I. And I don't think it's right the parents refuse. It's just I would encourage everybody to be similar and e equal in this district, and that's where my, my viewpoint comes well, from. I, so I, it's, it's I, within no. your right. It's yeah, fine. It I, I have no, I'm not, it's not a judgment of you or any parent. It's, okay. that's where. And the other thing is I do, I want to echo what Brian Graff said. I really do encourage all board members. There are plenty of pressures on the um, local board of education, and I mean local control, the whole idea of home rule is like almost quaint at this point. There's so many state and federal mandates. But it's very disappointing to have been chided by a former board of education president about we need to go to Trenton and we need to do this. I've been to Trenton. My son testified in Camden. I also work full time. I have a family, a house, et cetera. And I really would like to see more leadership from our board other than that resolution you did last year. I really, I'm just a voter. I'm not, I don't have any position of power, and you people do. And I really want to echo what Brian says, that it's up to you to take some leadership on these issues. OK? I appreciate your listening to me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing as there's no public comment, I would like a motion to go into uh, no. no adjournment. I'm going. Right, no, I don't need any motions now. No, it's at the beginning of the meeting now. Okay, um, a motion to adjourn. That's so strange. So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Go home. Go home.